you're listening to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. Welcome back to the Getting Salty Experience. It's the only one that brings, you know, yeah. brings it all to the kitchen table, the firehouse kitchen table. Welcome back. We got Rob Procaccini in there, my girl Sammy Peters, Brian Kay's in there. Who's B? Darren Phillips came all the way from Canada to hang out with us at uh, 9-11. Much appreciated to everybody that came down to the firehouse. We had a good time. For sure. Yeah, we had some milk well. and cookies. Yeah, there it I is. Sure, <laughs> I mean, there it is. We had like some... It. I made, fuck is that? I made sure I put all the silverware away when Gonzo and Jose came, and uh, you weren't missing nothing. No, we did a good account. You double checked, yeah, you had everything yeah. on inventory. Oh yeah, yeah, inventoried it all up, locked it up, yeah. safe and sound. I could you see know? it. I could see it. You got a Dominican and a Puerto Rican coming. You got to lock everything up. You know, man, why are you gonna be a Karen? <laughs> <laughs> What was his wife? That when she was she was walking up the stairs and we were going upstairs to get something to eat before the the ceremony started. So I'm like, no, go ahead. He's like, no, no, go ahead after you. So now I'm between <laughs> her and him walking up the stairs, and I go, wow, those are fabulous shoes. Oh, <laughs> she the Polish princess, like, you idiot. <laughs> Polish princess. Yeah, the Polish princess. Yeah, uh, it's my girl Agnes. Agnes. And I turned around to him. I'm like, you lucky man, you. Uh, and we went out very one night nice. and very nice and we ate one night till we all, all vomited basically that's how much we ate <laughs> mexican we uh, some mexican. indigestion Mex- of a major gas i didn't even make it out of the bathroom i went to the bathroom and i just burped i went to the <laughs> everything in the toilet bowl i'm like holy come God, on what? really well yeah. we we ate from what what time did oh, we get about God. one <laughs> to <laughs> one to what nine o'clock at night it was ridiculous stuffing our faces yeah. a lot of drinking <laughs> that Jose, that Jose says, was... Coops looks like he should have a box should be on a box of lucky charms with that beard <laughs> <laughs> who said that game fox game oh, oh, the guy's got Game-Fox. more lines than a fishing boat man he hits it he hits he it perfect it. every time yeah. actually what i should have said is what, what guns hey <laughs> oh, you got to make me go to it. I got to find it. You missed it. That was your... You're talking to my guy all wrong. It's wrong tone. Wrong tone. Wrong tone. Do it again. I'll stab you in the face with a soldering iron. Yeah, Dave. Stab you right in the fucking face with a soldering iron. Talking to my guy all wrong. All wrong. All wrong. Oh, yep. my God. That is too freaking funny, bro. Juicy beast. Yep. Oh, there's my man, Jose. What's there he doing? There he is. Where is he, the, is the actually... Polish princess with him? Oh, no way. He's on duty. He's he said duty. 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 Yeah. Anyway, we also had the New Jersey Fire Show down at Wildwood that uh, Ruffy had a really good time because he didn't come, <clears> but he had a great time, Ruffy. <laughs> and uh, I like that. I thank all the guys that came out for that. Uh, Pee Wee Laredo there. He's a funny little bastard. Uh, a whole bunch of guys came out to hang out with us down there. Good time. Good time. For sure. We would have liked it. It was hot as a mother effer. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, oh, I would love it under the tent. Thanks. I want to thank Jamie and Big Bill. And Chris, uh, we shared the booth with them. They actually shared the booth with us. So that's their booth. Uh, we'll play their commercial later, dude. Good guys. Good guys. But yes, listen, we will. Before we get too lost in the sauce here, let's do it. We got some commercials. We got to pay the bills, bro. Do we it. Do. We go here. Armor Tough, everybody. Armor Tough interlocking floor tiles are the best choice to replace new or aging, stained, or cracked concrete or epoxy floors. Here's why. Armor Tough tiles come with a lifetime warranty and are usually installed in one or two days, depending on the size of your station, with virtually no disruption in daily operation. Armor Tough interlocking tiles are guaranteed from chipping, cracking, peeling, breaking, or staining. Once installed, the tiles are non skid and non slip and meet the ADA standards for the friction coefficient. The tiles are stain resistant and impervious to any chemicals or volatiles that are used in the fire service. Once installed, your floor will be easy to clean with just soap and water. Install an Armor Tough tile floor in your apparatus bays, offices, training rooms, workshops, 
exercise rooms, kitchens, banquet halls, or any other room in your station. Call Vince today for a no-obligation quote at 908-917-7697. Why install a breakable epoxy floor that will need replacing in 5 to 10 years when you could have a floor that will last a lifetime? Drop a halligan on an Armor Tough floor and you won't see any damage. Don't try this with concrete or epoxy. Join the hundreds of career and volunteer fire departments nationwide who have chosen an Armor Tough interlocking tile floor. Armor Tough interlocking tiles are half the price of epoxy and will last a lifetime without issue. Again, call Vince today for a no obligation quote at 908 917 Seven six nine seven. Yes, give that boy Vince a call. Yeah, I, I got to. Let's get to the commercial, and I got to tell a quick funny story. It's because uh, uh, PJ Covert reminded me. So yeah, right, <laughs> friction coefficient. Yeah. Friction coefficient. Yeah. Hold Somebody on. did it. It is a book that will perhaps go down as the report from Engine Company eighty two of our generation. They Saved New York, written by Glenn Uston and Dan Potter, a retired New York City firefighter, explores the men and women of the FDNY and their respective journeys into the department. From everyone, from firefighters on the fire floor to those who were in positions of command, such as lieutenant, captain, and chief, and so on and so forth, this book explores their stories told through their perspectives. Each story differs, but the mission is the same, and the common theme is this. Those that put their lives in the line to save their fellow New Yorker, no matter the cost, no matter the situation, whenever they were in need. Get your hands on this book today. You will not regret it. Written by, once again, retired New York City firefighter Dan Potter and the concept and photography provided by the one and only Glenn Usden, a member of the Firebell Club in New York City. They saved New York, the men and women of the FDNY. If you'd like to purchase the book, you can do so at theysavedny.com. That is, again, www.theysavedny.com. And Mike's got like yes. go- gospel music behind it or something. Like soul glow, you know, soul glow. <laughs> Where you get that music from? Uh, let me tell this quick roofie story. It's, it's hysterical, bro. So <laughs> I don't even have my phone because it's running out and we need it for the credit card thing. So I tell my son, sit over here. And I plugged it up in a long time away, far away. So he sat there, come back, and I see a text from Ruffy. Right? And I'm like, I, I didn't answer him. Maybe it's to my wife, too. I don't know what the hell it is. So if you guys don't know, I'm sure everybody knows, everything has gone off. Even the price of T-shirts are ridiculous. Like, we just ordered a new shirt today. Gons is going to put it up in a minute. Uh, it, it's it's ridiculous. So I'm charging, I don't know, 19, uh, 2014 prices, I guess. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> and the text no, said. They charged you $35 for sweatshirts. I'm like, dude, we paid $33 for the sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what it, I don't know. Right? I'm it's like, so I, we're selling a lot. Like, it sounds like. Throw you <laughs> yeah. So I get the text. You know, we're paying like $33 for your shirt for $35. I don't know. You want to work for nothing? Go fucking head. I don't care if you want to work for nothing. Work for nothing then. I did oh not say, he took it as if I was saying it like that. I said, listen, I'm just, this is how it came off as my text. Listen, you want to stand there and sell for nothing? That's up to you, brother. That's all I wrote. And he comes back with, "I up, I up the prices. Everything's good." I'm like, "All right, bro." He's like, "I'm, I'm cool. If you, you're the one standing." I said, in the "Slow heat. your roll." I said, "Slow your oh, roll." Oh, slow your roll. I'm like, dude, I can't get any slower. You're the one standing so, in the heat. I I'm in the air condition. I don't so give a Jamie shit what you says, do. So I don't know if it's Jamie or somebody, somebody else in the booth goes, "I got an idea. Let's charge one for thirty, two for 60. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't tell you how many guys came up and built that. Like, how much of the shirts? He goes, one for 30, two for 60. Like, oh, yeah, all right, good. One for 30, two for 60. I'm like, holy shit, that worked. One for 30, two for 60. And then they're like, "Where? how did Ruffy know what you're charging for the shirts? Is, is he across the street on the motel with a pair of fucking <laughs> yeah, binoculars? Because I, I have to check. I know I'll, I check the square and I see everything going out for like 25. I'm like, this, this nitwit is selling the stuff. He has no idea. Obviously, where the brains of the operation is, and where yeah. the uh, the idea guy is, you know what yeah. I mean. You want to work, work for nothing? Have at it, kid. All right. Did you, bring, did you bring the underwear with you? No, bring the underwear. <laughs> I didn't even bring the trailer. Where you want to put it over my head as oh, I'm driving right. down there, bro? T- Tony's right. in the back, just big old smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! How does he know? Has he got binoculars somewhere? What does he know? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, like, and I didn't even answer the test. test. My son answered the text, so he got in trouble. So you got to keep your finger on the pulse, baby. Yeah. All right, let's bring him in. Do it. That's the guy cool. we both worked with. He was our lieutenant. 
fabulous guy. Go ahead, Rook. No, all right, coming to the that. stage, Lieutenant, the guy who caught all the work, Lieutenant Tony Belisari. <laughs> there it is. He no, he one of these said. I don't even want to do quick. It wouldn't be the first time you had underwear on your head. Oh, well, I had it the other day when I was at your old oh, lady's man. house. She oh. Like, oh, oh, and it starts off. Here we go. <laughs> All right, right at the old lady. That's the last resort. <laughs> that is the last resort. You got uh, nothing. Quick after one. You. Yeah. Ask your old lady. It was the last yeah. thing you had. All right, Gonzo, we got to get patriotic, though. Yes, sir, we, we do. Too far in the weeds here. Come on. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So fantastic, fantastic. Did you get the uh, word of the day? Uh, yeah, but don't do it yet. Give me two seconds. Start off your thing. Let me add it. Because I, uh, what? I'm a little Start slow. I'm, I'm a little slow. What are you doing back there, bro? Come on. I'm a, so, you know. <clears throat> I'll have Ruffy get all over you, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Come on. You're talking to my guy all wrong. Uh, okay. You uh, good? Yeah, let, let me fix it. Let me fix it. I don't like the way it looks. You know, I want to make sure. You that spelled it, it wrong good. anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let me fix that. You caught that. Thank you very much. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay, What's you the word of the day? Here we go. Hit it up. Give me a bang. The word of the day. Hey, thank you. Corvette. Oh, so slow. No, it's Zio slow. You knock oh. He's got a Z06. <laughs> oh, I know. Wait. That. Don't you have a Z06? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Corvette Zio slow. Come on. You two, oh. two. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to get myself. Let's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> get myself. We'll follow up with that one later. All right, that's that's faster than your car, Coops. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. I will talk about. It. I don't want to get him upset right after being in the show. What's I like that? him to tell. Him he already looks like him. he's sweating from that. Just he that was, one he, thing. He was the black cloud. He wore a black shirt too. He was the black cat cloud two eighty eight. Always cut all the work. You'll see it uh, on his helmet as we flash through the pictures. For, you know that, or he, I don't know. Maybe he put it in the oven. I don't know what he was doing, but no oven time. No Three oven time. Degrees? No. No. All right. He looks good, though. Doesn't he look? Oh, uh, maybe. Look at that maybe. thing, bro. He looks a lot younger there. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I don't exactly. know what all happened. Bow chicka wow wow. Look at that the squad guy, is like dog ears. I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, it worked there. All right, but let's go. Let's go back to the young, a young Anthony. Way back. Way back. Let's go back to where you grew up in uh, the neighborhood. Maybe a little family life. What brought you to the fire service? <clears throat> all right. Uh, I grew up on Long Island. Um. I joined the Volleys uh, at 18. And uh, what um, town? Albertson. Albertson. You're still Albertson. there. I'm still here. 48 years in the fire department. Wow. Um, you know, when uh, back then we all, uh, I mean, I went to college. I was a <clears throat> computer guy. And, uh, we all, all the guys from the firehouse, we went and we took all the tests, all the civil service tests. Um, the fire department was the first one to call me. So, of course, I went there and, uh, you know, the rest is history. Did you have anybody in your family that was in the fire department? In the no. Valleys? Nothing. Uh, in the Valleys, my brother-in-law was in the Valley. He's the one who told me to join. He took a young Tony, brought him in there. So you're a computer guy. What were you best around, like the Commodore VIC-20? What were you doing? Uh, back? <laughs> no, I, I worked for a company that made the smallest uh, computer. I don't have one. It was about the size of a refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> IBM yeah. something. I was going to say the IBM. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I was thinking. Texas <laughs> Instruments or some shit like that, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, and his phone was about this long, too. He had one of those ones in the case. He's like, hello? <laughs> <Yeah>. Cell phone. <laughs> oh, they didn't have like cell phone. It was like a shoe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, like, you, you just did this. You know why kids didn't know what that was? What oh, I, said, no. I made a reference to this. Like, what's that? I'm like, a rotary phone. You don't know what a rotary phone is? Yeah, I don't even think they know what a house phone is. My mother had one, and I tried to make a phone call one day. It took me like six tries. I kept screwing up. 
Yeah. <laughs> Back in the old days. So you join the volleys. Join you take the, the test. And hold on a second. Yeah, I got your info right here. I took so what, when did you actually take the test? I guess you took that test. That was the same test. test as Kelly and uh, your brother. We were on, all on the same list. That really hard test. Yeah. The last, the last uh, men's test. Sorry, ladies. Oh, uh, he's going there, Ruffy. He's bringing out the why am I right there? That, that was a hard test, bro. He had the ledge it walk. A, and he had really the, hard test. You had the, the, the hang for two minutes on the chin up bar. The hang, yeah. Try to hang like this. You had to have your hands this way. For two minutes. Right. The clock started at two minutes. Right. Yeah, yeah. it was a really tough test. Um, a bunch of my friends passed it, but only uh, three others besides me took it. From Albertson? Yeah. They're like, you know, Jimmy Armin from 154. Yeah, 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 of course. Pete yeah. Cosgrave from 316. And then oh, Billy shit. Clark, he was in 226. He was a good fireman too, man. Yeah. I, I I liked him. I went to 316 on my 30 day uh, detail to the yeah, engine. He was good. He was a good guy. So we all took it. We all took it together, and uh, you know, the, <clears throat> there was a couple other guys that took it. They they went to the cops. And, Suckers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn it! But uh, you did. hold on, he definitely <laughs> <you> dick. <laughs> yeah. The the reason I took it, this was crazy. I didn't think I could, you know, go with the hang with the big boys. And I had a neighbor. She locked herself out of the house. And back then we had skeleton keys to get into the house. So they were all the same. So she asked me, oh, do you have the key? I go, sure. So I went over. I unlocked the door. And there was a chain on the door. So I didn't want to break it. So I unscrewed it. And uh, all of a sudden this guy pulls up. It was her boyfriend with the fire department uniform on. He was in proby school. And I talked to him for about... 10 minutes and I said, well, if this guy could be a fireman, <laughs> I, could I ended up being his boss one day. Is that right? Did overtime that up the, up, he was up in the Bronx. I did overtime up there. and uh, That's uh, pretty funny. Yeah. I think, Gonzo, weren't you saying that about uh, Jose? If this guy could be a fireman. Didn't yeah. you say that? <laughs> you didn't say that? I heard him mumbling under his <laughs> breath. It's not like that. Now he's looking for that. I heard him pump stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you got her in the apartment and you were doing your business and the boyfriend came over. And no, no, no. <laughs> like you were long no. dipping or something. Or oh, something like that. No, no. 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 Not, not well, that's good. Moment. All right, so who's in your probie class? Because you go in uh, um, 7 11 July. It's great to be in probie school in the middle of summer. Yeah, was, bro. 7 was, 11. What happened was there was that big gap because they froze the list. Then they had, I was like <clears> eight away or something like that. Oh, that sucks. And, uh, then they had that November class that Kelly was in, uh -huh. and it was all the guys they passed up. So then, again, I had to wait again until July, and there were 300 guys in the class. So that same locker room that Kelly was in, there yeah. were 150 of us because they split the class in half. It was 150 of us, and uh, you know you were putting your pants on, and you had your, your foot in somebody else's pants. That's how close it was. You know, It was a little closet. And it's 150 guys. And who were some of the guys in your class? Uh, Quickie was in there. Get, oh, get out of here. Quick yeah. here. Quick here. Um, Vinny Doherty. Uh, uh, um, sure. Angaro. Angaro was in your class too? Wow, yeah. you had a superstar class there, fella. Yeah, we had a, a bunch of guys in there. They were in the – Quickie and Angaro were in the afternoon. Doherty I knew from the morning. Was but, he a nut back then, Quick, or was he – Oh, of course. Yeah, never changed, you know. But uh, so when did you start figuring out where you wanted to go, what you wanted to do? Well, I didn't have I didn't have any hooks, so I ended up going to two sixty engine in Long Island City. Single engine, yep. Single engine. Right you should be fresh. Oh, wow. Wow. Holy <laughs> mackerel, bro! <laughs> yeah. Who's that guy? Holy wow! Shit! I just found this on the website. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is a porn stash. A porn stash. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, a fucking, that's a flavor saver there. Oh, oh, shit. If I oh. ever saw one. <laughs> Looks like you use a little lip gloss, too, on that picture before you went on. You know, I don't know. He never had that before. That's a 24-year-old. I don't know. Year old, that's a 24-year-old you. Wow. Wow. I got to say, though, bro, for, you know, minus the hair, you look pretty much the same, uh, you know? I mean, yeah. it's not a mess. Let me look at that again. 
I wish I could I do it side my, by side. I got my mother's jeans. My mother, you know, she uh, she was in her 80s and she looked like she was 40. Yeah, well, good for you then, man. Good for so, your father. Yeah. 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 But I look just like my father, but I got you my got mother's, mother's jeans. jeans she was your half browser on your mother's oh, side. Oh, it's half browser. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I'm browser. browsing. So you don't got no hooks. You go to 260, which is a nice little single engine. A lot of project work, though, right? Yeah. The first day I'm there, we get it's a it's like a middle of the road company. Right. The first day I'm there, we get ten runs. <laughs> and, I think this uh, is, uh... they were ready to kill me. Get the fuck out of here, bro! <laughs> He's a black cloud. So then we were allowed to work overtime. Uh, right away, I get overtime in 163 that night, and I catch my first job. Nice. Huh. On yes. the can, probably. Right? Wayne's Boulevard? It was Where on the can. I got the truck fever then. I go, this is great. I love this. But uh, yeah, it was a nice uh, apartment fire. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a first night. Was sorry, Mr. sorry, LT. Just... <laughs> um, I was going to say something to the pre show, too, because it's like. <laughs> Did you hear it? Did you oh, hear God. it? <laughs> Clear as day. Did you really? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's why I said, let me put it up a little bit. Oh, that's think. freaking awesome. I can't hear it. I don't know. No, no, you can't. <laughs> oh, that's freaking awesome. Sorry, LT. No problem. <laughs> Carry no on. Problem. And when we, were in, when we were in Proby school, too, we had those same yellow slickers. They used to melt to you because it was so hot out. They used to melt to you, you know, those uh, that, that Timmy talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All we had, we had a, like the space helmet. It wasn't <laughs> even a, a New Yorker type helmet, which we went into the field with. The Dark original helmet. Until our helmets came in. You went into the field with those helmets? Yes. Holy Christ. Ew. Yeah, I wouldn't I, spot I, a probie with that on, would you? <laughs> like fucking... yeah. yeah, you couldn't spot me. Yeah, it was like a bumper in a uh, pinball game. Yeah. But and then we got our helmets later on. Oh. Because uh, you got your really leathers, hard, so it took them a while. We got the leathers. Oh, that might be a good time to show that picture, guys. In that one picture there, the old ones. Hold the helmets. There it is it's on the right. Ah, oh, then you had the composite oh, you put it in one. The box too, huh? Buff. You boxed it up, huh, fella? Yeah. What? Uh, who was somebody guys at two sixty? You remember? Uh, Who's your captain? Nobody that uh, anybody would remember. Dave Lanat. I know Dave. Yeah. What about Glenn? Was Glenn there too? Glenn. Oh yeah. Um, Big black. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Nice guy. He was there. Actually, um, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, he was a chief. Um, oh yeah, the D. Domenico. Louis, Louis D, uh, not Louis. Uh, his. I worked with. I went to school with his brother, but D. Domenico was there. He, he got a, there. He got he there, and I left uh, right away because I was only there. For eight months. How, how did you get a detail to 138 after eight months? Um, I got assigned to 138 after eight months. Um, what happened was uh, we our probation was only six months. So uh, one of the lieutenants there, he goes, "You don't belong here. You know, you you want to get you want to get a lot of work." So uh, you know, I got there. Uh, he knew the captain. And uh, so it was because of him you went to 138, not primarily. He brought it up. He said you should go to like a place like 138. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was the captain? Rabando at the time? Rabando, yeah. Yeah. So you, after eight months, you just put in a transfer and you went to 138? Yep. And they were transferring uh, another guy from 260, transferred there the month before me. They were doing transfers like crazy. Huh. So he went there a month before me and then Vinny Zeno. And then I went there a month later. Were they short guys there, or was it like? Yeah, they made a lot of. They got a lot of promotions oh. at that time. A lot of guys, actually, a lot of guys went to the fire marshal's office. Was Chief they Steve went. there when you got there? Chief Steve was there. He was already there. Oh, I thought you were there ahead of him. No, no, Chief Steve was there before me. But uh, yeah, back back to two sixty though. Um, I was. Uh, we had some wild stuff there. You know, I guess because of the project, so we. One day we go to a guy, uh, they pull a box. It was before, way before we did EMS. They pull a box, and the uh, guy, he's, uh, he's shot. 
So uh, we help him put him in the ambulance, and a guy comes over, and he goes, is he going to make it? And the ambulance guy goes, hey, yeah, he's probably going to make it. He opens the door of the thing, pulls out uh, – uh, a big butcher knife. And oh him. my! <laughs> is he going to make it? Yeah, not anymore. He is. <laughs> not anymore. He made Wanted it. Want to though. make sure he did the job. Want to make sure he finished the job, like, bro. I think he asked his mom. He goes, "Mom, can I borrow this knife? Oh. Oh. Yeah, bring it back. You know, it's a uh, paw. You know, got to take the hoof. I got to get the hoof. It's stuck. It's stuck in the grill. It's a shame. He, I, you know, he shoved cut that off knife the... in that guy like five times. Oh. It looked like a movie, but it was real. And the guy wow. probably lived. You know, that's crazy. Yeah, well, those projects, what were those, space, uh, right? what were those projects right out of the water right there? The uh, Queens Bridge. The Queens Bridge. Those were some of the, the worst Astoria projects project in the country, down, man. By 117, the Astoria projects were down there. Right, but the Queens Bridge was some of the worst for, for oh, crime yeah. in the country. I think that I was a, the worst. I had a wild job there. Like two weeks before I got transferred, I caught two jobs and had two grabs. One was on Roosevelt Island. When we went to uh, Roosevelt Island, that house that Sock is in, that firehouse, mm -hmm. that was supposed to be 260s. And the people of Long Island City fought that and said, uh, you know, we want you on the mainland because that bridge used to always get stuck. Yeah. In position. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they were working on the bridge. They always had the detail companies over there, right? Because yes, the yes, they did. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't know that was supposed to be 260s firehouse. That was supposed to be 260 firehouse. We go there and... Those were federal buildings, so they didn't follow New York codes. And you went, the elevator went like every three floors, and you had three doors. One went straight in, one went down, and one went up. So we used to take the irons there because, you know, it was, it's a lot of times it took 116 a long time to get there. So uh, I had the irons that night. I had the control, so I had the irons, and it's all stand pipes. So I go over and I. For, I go up to the door and pop, it pops right open. I go down the stairs and uh, I find a 600 pound woman, easy 600 pounds. I moved to the furthest because she was halfway on the stairs and we couldn't get by her. So I kind of like pulled her down the stairs and then they had trouble uh, hooking up the, uh, the line. The standpipe was broken. They had to go down another floor. So, uh, sub seller, <laughs> no. I, I had a sub seller job in there. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> they sent it to Manhattan, but um, you know, and I, I pulled her away and I kept looking at her. And I mean, 600 pounds of something that hasn't been washed in a long time. Oh man, oh, I know about smell. Like, oh, I know about smell. That's a huge bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled the sheet off the bed and I had a cover, it was completely naked. Oh. No offense, I, <laughs> and we I put it out with the with the uh, with the sink, throwing pots of what it was a kitchen fire, mm. but uh, yeah. So I I did that, and then uh, right after that, uh, went to the Queensbridge projects. <clears throat> they're they're the bad ones, real long stretches. I had the nozzle, went up fifth floor. As we're walking in through the courtyard, guy jumps out the window. So. Uh, you know, this isn't good. Get up there, and the door is just cracked open a little bit. So I'm waiting for water, and I stick my hand around, and the woman was behind the door. Mm -hmm. Pulled her out, and just as I got water, I handed it to the truck, and that they went it. to Metal Day. <laughs> I was say, oh, they they got the award. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, good. Yeah. Nice job. They yeah. had some pretty deep courtyards, right? Like, yeah. from the street, right? Yeah, really really long, yeah, long stretches there. Yeah. 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 Oh. But uh, and I did go to a sub seller from there because that was the foam unit. They had a transformer. Oh, right. They, they the were the foam, foam unit. unit. Foam unit and the searchlight unit. The I was I drove the searchlight because I was the only one in the, in the uh, when they always had a guy assigned there. But the, when there wasn't, you know, they needed somebody who could drive a double clutch truck. So oh, I, double was, clutch it, bro. I was the only one who knew how to drive a double clutch truck, so I was in the searchlight unit. <clears throat> But uh, we we went with the foam unit to a transformer fire in Manhattan, and we were a bunch of sub sellers down. Roofy loves the sub sellers. I was on the news. Do they still that. have a searchlight unit? They I don't can't. Think so. No. What the hell did they use that for anyway? I, don't nah, know. I mean, those things they didn't light up anything. 
<laughs> my basement is brighter than that. <laughs> I guarantee it didn't work when it got there. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. It was a 1952 like, Mac. No shit. Yeah. Well, 260s was a Mac when you got there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you yep. just you guys ran in with 261, who they disbanded, right? And that's 116 is a single truck up there. Yeah. It's 116, 115, and 117 with the yeah. trucks there. Yeah, 115's got a nice, nice quarters, man. Old firehouse, nice. Yeah, that's a real nice yep. old place. You wouldn't even know it's down that block, right? It's like nah. in the middle, and it's not on a main drag. It's so like or, it's such an ornate there. old firehouse, man. It's beautiful. It is ornate. It is. All right, so you somehow get to 138. You don't know how. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever works, man. Cap, I've never done this before. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Cap, do you think? Ooh! <laughs> over to oh, yes. Ooh. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> yeah, go ahead. Joe Rabando is the captain. Right. I was in the next group from a guy you might know him. You know, Chief, he wasn't called Chief Steve then. <laughs> But uh, did he have a nickname in the firehouse then? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. No, was he quiet? Uh, yeah, somewhat. We did studied you know, together too. We I were was in the same he was already studying, probably, bro. There was some big dudes there, man. Like Matulis was a huge, yeah, dude, right? Um, there was another yeah, big guy there, uh, too. Fearon. Oh, Jimmy Furon. Big yeah. eyes, man. Oh, big we were the best, they were the basketball champs. I couldn't say we, I know nothing yeah. about basketball. But uh, yeah, we were the basketball champs for uh, yeah. quite a few years there. Are any of you guys in this pick? I mean, it's kind of hard to make out, but this is uh, your. That's a little bit yeah. later, one thirty-eight. Yeah, this is this is it. That pick is from the nineties. Okay, I'll, I'll go over the people in that pick later. Okay, when we, when we move on. But there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of real uh, salty guys in that picture. But uh, he, had, uh, Rabando was a licensed locksmith, so he used to, you know. Possible, oh, wow, really, it's really. great. And uh, you know, we would we would get. I had lock picks. I could pick a lock. You Ooh, know, you? I used to practice it like every night, trying to pick out because I never really slept in the firehouse. Uh -huh. You know, we just well, back when I first got there, it wasn't like it was. Uh, you know, towards the late eighties and nineties, where you guys were running your balls off too over there. Yeah, we did a lot of a lot of running. But um, some years you do what seven eight thousand runs right over there. Uh, I think that most we did was in the sevens. Yeah. But you know we were still up there with a, uh, you know a lot of work. We did a lot of work. And uh, you know you did you do all of that running. The odds of catching work is yeah. Good. That's what it was. If you ran, you and caught work. Huge. And that, you know, in, that, in the early eighties was you know the crack was big. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know the drug dealers used to burn each other's. Uh, each other around. It was like, mostly yeah, Spanish and Italian then, right? In the in the certain yeah. areas. Yeah, there was the, the small Italian area up by Spaghetti Park and yeah. Yeah. That thing. Corona. The rest was all Spanish by then. Let's see. I'm sure Patty Lee made a comment about the Italians somewhere. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get there yet. Okay. Who, 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 who were the other bosses there when you were there besides Rabando? Oh, um then we had like a Lieutenant Halloran. He was. He had to be in his sixties when when I was there, you know. And doing we, all that running around. Yeah. Crazy. Well, you, you you know when I go over the the list of officers, you, you're going to go, you know, there's a lot of guys that were went there. Uh, one guy, he's in that pic. Well, in that picture, you had Captain Spillane. He was the captain of the engine, and uh, what he used to do to the probies was uh, crazy like i saw him in here kenny gunther um he uh he used to have him he used to tell him clean the baseboard but you can only use cold water so all would do because then you didn't have the the exhaust system all it would do because it was all the exhaust from the from the rig just <laughs> <laughs> so he would go and kenny would go oh well cap can i uh can i use hot water and, and soap he goes, no, because then nobody else, the other guys wouldn't have anything to do. <laughs> so he used oh, to break, that, break the, the guy's balls. And he was there a long time. He was there a long, I was going to say that. He, yeah. Yeah, he was he there. He what, in the 90s, I think, didn't he? He left, I'd say, 
because after him in the engine, Holtzmeyer came. And I think that was probably the, um, I, probably like maybe 94, 93, 94 in that area. Yeah. But, uh, you know, some of the other guys that came later on, I'll give you the uh, Jack Sugar Cane from 103. He was in 103 20 years. He got promoted to lieutenant and came to 138. I didn't know that either. Yeah, he was a, oh, what a, what a gem. He passed away a few years ago. Um, what a great, great guy. Um, then uh, uh, after a band, though, um, just trying to think, uh, John Carroll came. John Carroll, he went to the 3-8 Battalion as a chief. Another good guy. Um, then uh, Ed Penner. Uh, he got hurt at a job and got three quarters. Then after that was uh, Tom Neary. Yeah, God wow. rest his soul. Great guy. He was a lieutenant there? Cap what was he? Captain. Captain there? Captain. Eh? Captain. <clears throat> and uh, great guy. I mean, oh. Wow. You know, he. Uh, I ended up driving him. What happened was one of the guys, Eddie Camilleri, he had gotten hurt and he was his driver. I was a backup driver for Kane. And he, I get a call, and this is all, all the call was. This is Captain Neary. You're driving me. You have to be here on Thursday. Click. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm working on Thursday. <laughs> we got called to the rock one day. He goes, uh, this is Captain Neary. I don't go to the rock. Click. <laughs> you know the rock? Up. <laughs> uh, oh, but, uh, shit. That's freaking awesome. I could have used that one. <laughs> we've heard, we've yeah. heard a lot of guys bro, come and say that guys who left you know, the Bronx or Brooklyn, that 138, you know, was very much like a, a Bronx or a Brooklyn truck, you know, the amount of work. Yeah. I would say 138, 136, those guys were, they had a lot of good guys go through those houses just because they were, they caught work. Mm -hmm. They ran yeah. around, they had a big area, they had pride in, uh, yeah, 154 you know, too. 154. And 154. Yeah. All those three <clears throat> companies, man, you did a lot of work. The guys were all, Basically, the kind of laid back guys. So, uh, you know, everybody was the same. You know, some of the lieutenants we had there. Well, Jack Kane was one. Uh, Frank Johnson. Frank Johnson was from Rescue 2. He was the guy, if you see the, the picture with uh, Downey and Ielpi and Kleehouse, if you look all the way over to the, to the right side of it, that's Frank Johnson. Um, uh, who else? Let's see. Were you Tigers back then? Really? Uh, Tigers for in the nineties. In the nineties, yeah. they, they were Tigers, but they didn't have, they didn't wear the tails and all of that stuff. I was going to say, did you have a little little tail on the back of your helmet? No, I you? didn't. <laughs> I was, yeah. I was no, I didn't. Uh, I thought yeah. I thought it was cool. I thought it was all right. I, I my neighbor down the block just got a, jo a spot. He was a uh, he was a fireman in one seventy five, and he just got the spot as a lieutenant. In 138. I see him every morning walking my dog. They're, they're doing a lot of work right now, man. Yeah, yeah. They're well, doing... you know what it is? The uh with the eco with with these economic and law political scenario. Yeah. You know, you know, people can get away with it. A free for all. Hey, hey Stan. Yeah. Right back. Oh, I love Stan right back. It's a free for all but, uh, out there. Yeah, it, you know, it's gonna get busy again. Yeah, you know, that and the e-bikes. <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, but, uh, he fights in the hallway. And then after after Neary came uh, Oreo Palmer. No shit. Oh right, I forgot he was wow. there. Oreo Palmer was there Oreo. too. So you had some great great officers there. You know, another one from Rescue Two was Rich Rotans was in the engine. Another guy, but you had some uh, you had some great guys there. Well, it didn't hurt that you were going to work because you had the yak in your back pocket. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I forgot yeah. about that, oh, bro. Oh, you just reminded me of a Mike Yak story. <laughs> <laughs> One day they leave me back. For those of you who don't know, Yak was a dispatcher who was Queens. 138 for Queens and was 138 yeah. buff. And would say, yeah, uh, we got a job out. You know, it could be anywhere in Queens. Uh, 138, we're available. Yeah, take that in, 138. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you send me the address? Yeah, it's about 1,700 yeah. miles south of where you are. <laughs> Before before he was a dispatcher, he was in the uh, fire fire patrol. 
Um, he, uh, I, they leave me back, and it turns out to be a job. And Mike Yak, I'm cooking. And Mike Yak is in the firehouse, and it's a job. I go, Mike, you got to bring me there. So he, I'm driving in this car. You talk about putting your life in your hands. Oh He's my waving God. his radio out the window. <laughs> <laughs> red light. That's hilarious. People. <laughs> oh my god, that's freaking hilarious. This is Queens 324. Three, two, yeah. <laughs> Time now is 1804. Yeah. Corona House of Fire. House what of Fire. Yeah. Time now is correction. <laughs> that's what he used to do all the time. Yeah. Correction. Time now is 1805. Follow on the box. 324. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was uh he, he just, just passed, passed away not too long ago. Right? Say, not too long ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. He used to come. He used to come to, to squad two eighty eight. Yeah, he used to break his balls. He used yeah. to tell like, all the time, "Don't let Stevie see that mustache, kid. Don't <laughs> let him see it." <laughs> ah, shit. Good stories, man. But uh, yeah, Oreo cool. Palmer was there also. So mm-hmm. it, it, when he came, I was driving. I was still driving the, in the captains' groups. So uh, he comes. I'm on vacation, um, and. Uh, yeah, Galetta worked there also. One of the guys was saying, mm-hmm. but uh, he's uh, he. I'm on vacation, so I miss his first couple of tours. His first tour, he uh, it's a electrical panel making noise. He goes down there and it blows up in his face. He's on <laughs> medical. His second tour, uh, a lot of times the exhaust thing used to pop off the truck, so he goes to put it back on, and we had a box on the side. And he lifts his head up and cracks his head open on oh. medical leave. So now his third tour, I come back from vacation. Third tour, I don't know the guy from anything. So I go, uh, he goes, uh, uh, we were going to go out for drill or the meal. I go, hey, Cap, you want to get in on the pool? He goes, oh, yeah. He had that high pitch voice. Yeah, Tony, what are you? What is it? Yeah, what time you go sick? <laughs> the next time you hurt yourself, so, uh, I, got, I got ten minutes from now, so I'm gonna hit you with a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go up the stairs and let me behind you. I'll push you down the stairs. Right. A- All of those guys, it, it was unbelievably amount that I learned from those guys. In fact, I, you know, when I went to Jack Kane's funeral, I told his daughter, I said, "He's the man who taught, taught me how to be a lieutenant." Really? You know, one of his famous lines is, "Don't make me ever give an order." Uh, that's, that's great. Good. That's a great line, man. Yeah. Oh, Don't make me ever give an order. Hold on. I used to, I used to tell it to Clippy, this is an order. And he used to look at me with that face. I'm like, this is an order. I'm going to give my first order. This is my order. <laughs> yeah, luckily in, in 288, I never had to give an order. No, I don't have to give orders. Thing. No, hmm. you're in Disney World in most of those co- If you're yeah. in a place, if you're in a place like that most yeah, of the you time, don't, you don't have to do anything. The no guys order. are going to take care of everything for you. Yeah. You know, that's the greatest place to be. Uh, that's the closest thing to being in SOC is being in like 138 or one of those busy companies. Because Absolutely. Of, uh, yeah, everybody's you know, motivated there. else they wouldn't be People there. People that are there want to be there. Yeah. You know what? Every every 9-11, I think about like, you know, all the sacrifice and what, and what everybody did, obviously. But I always hear Oriel Palmer, like that he made it. You know, you hear his voice on Handy Talkie, right, when they played yeah. it. And he made it to the 80s, you know, whatever, the 70s, 80s floor. And he's yeah. giving reports about we need two and a two, two, two and a halfs up here. We can knock down some fire. We got 1045s. He was doing it. Yeah. You yeah. know, even I mean, you know, I think he was a runner, right? If I if yeah, I he remember was, right, yeah. he was a big runner. So he had, you know, he got up there pretty fast. I mean, think about 80 flights, man. I used to call him up and ask him questions. He gave me a he gave me a copy of all of his books uh, that he had, it had every report that you had to fill out as an officer. And I used to, a lot of them are word for word right out of his report mm. because uh, it was so easy. Nobody ever gave me that. I didn't do any reports. <laughs> Especially the one for BI. I don't know what happened to that one, bro. Well, the Neary, Neary told me, uh, he said, you leave it, here. here's, here's the trick. Leave, leave it there it. long enough. <laughs> leave it in your mailbox. But nobody asks if by the next time. <laughs> <Throw it out. laughs> and if somebody does ask you about it, you say, oh, it's in my mailbox. I was just getting to it. You know, like, <laughs> somebody told oh, me no, that these little thing. nuggets. We should uh, do yeah. those as uh, old school tips of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Office is old school tip of the day. Leave it in your yeah, mailbox. Who, who uh, okay. I wanted to get back. Who was in your uh, study group? You said Chief Steve. Who else was in your study group? Chief Steve. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, Neil Heinz. You remember Neil? I know that name. I do. Yeah. Yeah. He ended up being, I think, a chief. Uh, Paul Kozlowski. He came from like seven truck, went to 138 and then got promoted. Uh, Kevin McElhaney. You got to know Kevin. Oh, yeah. He right. was, yeah, he became a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, Heinz became a teacher. You know. Um, what about Quigley? Was Quigley in that tweet? No, Quigley wasn't in it. I don't think Quigley was in it. Craig Groth was in it. Uh, Bob Nagel from 58 Engine. Uh -huh. Remember, we were we were actually looking for him at the... Yes, yes, yes. He was the one with the, the rope the, went down into the spot. Yeah. Yes, I remember that name. Bobby Nagel. Another real good guy. He, like, really mellow. Had his cigarette. No shit. You know. But... Uh, Patty well, Lee said, I sent that yesterday. It's in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another great line. <laughs> You didn't yeah. get it with our uh, archaic system of a guy that comes and picks it up in the bag well, that could get lost in hard copies. Back then, you got to figure that we were still using a typewriter, and we had carbon paper. The BF, uh, what, not the BF. What was it? The B twenty five or the, what the heck was that? Oh, B, I don't remember. Leo, remember? But uh, yeah, we were using carbon paper back then you know so you and it was the same carbon paper you used it like so i'm gonna i'm gonna coming off of it i'm gonna give you something you're probably gonna know right away so we used to go to a ton of car fires almost i would say yeah. we were going to car fires because we had the 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 factories down by like 20th avenue 19th avenue down there so we used to go there all the time yeah and when we used to go down there <clears throat> i don't remember Pat, uh patty lee so much but lieutenant urban always used to say to me when i was there take take it get that license plate off the Pull the license plate off the car with the, with the Halligan. And I would pop the, ha the, the thing and I would bring him the plate and he would throw it up on top of the factory, right? Yes. You know why? Cool. Like a drill on it. Yeah. Nope. No. Because you didn't have to do, do the report. report. Because <laughs> it was an ADV. It was an abandoned car. It was an abandoned <laughs> car. If it was an ADV, you didn't have to do the report. If there was a license, you know, if it was somebody's car, you had to do a report. So I didn't realize. <laughs> Patty Lee said, truckies don't do reports. <laughs> so he used to make me, and I didn't realize that for yeah. all of those years until I got, became lieutenant. And I was still, I had the, uh, that uh, carbon paper for only like a short time, maybe less than a year, a year or so. Yeah. And then they went to the computer, you know, but uh, it's just so funny. Yeah. Captain Splain, don't use my good carbon paper. <laughs> Use the old shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you pass that on to anybody, Roof? That little nugget? Or what's that? Yeah, you know, pull a little license plate off. You gotta pass well, that. But, 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 but by the time that uh like I say, I when I, it was funny because one of the first times I had a, a a report to do, I was in 102 and we had a car fire. And when I came up, it was it was you could tell it it was uh it was already had been burned out, you know what I mean? So hmm. when I came back to look at it and i realized that the that you don't need to do it on a on an adv it was just like it clicked in my head i'm like that's right. son of a bitch you know yeah. here i am thinking you know i have no idea why he's doing it you know yeah. what i mean but you have to have it. priorities right yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he was great with that <laughs> wow. i mean I, I did that more than a yeah. dozen times you know what i mean bobby sanos the adv was a one-line report that's yeah one-line report so yep. it was just so funny people wouldn't remember you know know that but <laughs> and Kenny Gunther was in uh, he he's I think he was still in the engine because I don't think he came over to the truck until later on but he's uh, he's got the can and I got the irons um, and he's got it we're gonna we have a a car fire in a garage under a building so he's they can't get the gate open so he's gonna do his first I go yeah take the saw you can cut the gate and then I'm looking and I go wait a minute this is how to get somebody really pissed at you. He's got the saw. He's ready to go. I go over and there's a little key on the side. <laughs> I, I pop it open and I, I short it out. And the door goes up. <laughs> he's like, you son he of actually a still thing. brings it up to me. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> you stole my thunder, man. That's my thunder. Yeah. I finally get to cut some shit, man. Yeah, so I, oh, you can cut it. So. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. <laughs> now, were you... Uh, were you <laughs> <laughs> um, he was going to come. Pizza cutter for Christmas. Pizza cutter to be here for Christmas. 
you know how many guys at the show said, where's the pizza cutter? <laughs> no. Pizza, oh, Get out of here. I love it. That's great. Well, we, uh, pay, we pay seven for them. We'll sell them for five. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're got jokes. Two for seven. Yeah, two for seven. We'll be yeah, two for seven. My financial wizard over there. That's who he is. Who are you going to ask me, Kevin? Oh shit! Oh, were you um, were you married at the time when you got there? Are you? Uh, I not when I got there. I got married when I was there. Oh, because I remember that was a place like. Like, you know, my brother got there, although he's been with my sister law forever, but the guys, like, they had their own, like, apartment, right? These called the Sin oh, yeah, Bin or yeah. something? Yeah, uh, the Sin Bin. Yeah, Sin Bin. Guys were just uh, single guys going to work, you know, playing, doing activities, you know, what, what the firemen do, softball, uh, basketball. Yeah, we, that was probably living a life, going to a ton of fires, right? Yeah. I think it was yeah. in um, Sin Queens bin. Village, right? Sin yeah. Bin? Yeah. Yep. It was, uh, I think, Quigley, uh, Matulis, McElhaney, and I don't know who the fourth guy was. Yeah, four Maybe guys living single. <laughs> but uh, tough life, right, Ruff? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and a tiger yeah. on top of it. Oh, you yeah. yeah. go to what was the restaurant over there? Uh, the uh, Parkside. The Parkside, great oh, food. Tough, tough Tony. Yeah, it's a tough Tony. You go to Parkside, yeah. then you go right across, <coughs> you get us some ice. You ice. Uh, how many times we had a fire in the Parkside? We had you a did? fire in the kitchen in the Parkside one, and the uh, we're still there, and the contractor came in to redo it. <laughs> Don't waste time, there, bro. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna fix What's it. wrong with this picture? <laughs> well, you had the, the refrigerator in Spaghetti Park over there. They had the bocce ball court. Yeah. You had a refrigerator fully stocked, not locked. Where in the city can you have that? Nope. And nobody's touching it. Yeah, nobody would touch and, it. Uh, how about was Mama Mutz back there too? Oh, Mama, Mama Mutz was, was great, man. What a place. That place by right by 138, they would make the fresh mozzarella like this thick, oh. right? What's it out? Oh, Every day had a different sandwich. Pork, oh, like sliced pork uh, oh, sandwich. Yeah, that was chicken Thursday. cutlet. Thursday was pork day. Oh my god, that was the best day. And they were Quickie. five bucks for these sandwiches that you couldn't. Five eat. bucks. Quickie yeah, yeah. was so far out of our area, and Quickie would be like, "We got to get over there," you know. And he would be Wednesday. Yeah, we got to drive <laughs> over there. Yeah. Come on, go over here. Yeah, the time <laughs> was like Wednesday. You know, every day they had a different. A different sandwich. Yep. Mm. But, uh, wow, I forgot sure. about that. Mama Sounds Mutz was good. awesome. She used to old lady used to sit in the corner, right? She'd be sitting in a rocket chair <laughs> in the corner. The daughters would be running the joint. Yep. And they, she was always trying to hook up her daughters with one of the firemen, you know. Oh, you should How tight was that block? Lots of money. The block was so tight. There was five oh, yeah. firemen well, they owned it. all the yeah. time. They owned it. Yeah. Yeah. Of, they, they owned the whole block. Yeah, right, actually, right, right. Actually, one of the daughters, they imported a guy from Italy to marry him. And... He had the uh, the ravioli store next door. Oh, me, the ravioli oh, store. Fuck a ravioli. Like, it's right store, right? like it was a tiny, blo tiny, narrow block with like five fire trucks parked on. Yeah, it was. It's, it and was a line just of like... all the uh, all the city workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Five yeah. bucks yeah. sandwich. Yeah. Cops, yeah, the cops were there too, right? Everybody yeah. was there. Oh, mama, what's gravy on the side? Got the same, man. Yeah, the gravy on the side. Yeah. Um, oh, so you got the other 138 stories? Because we want to talk about how you got drafted to the squad. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we got to – let's see. I think I got <laughs> Patty wants to know how many bodies are buried under the bocce ball court. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, I'm in I'm in, um, uh, I'm in. in 138, and I get – I do overtime in 292 one night. Pat <clears throat> was the lieutenant in rescue. So, you know, we're, I'm watching the drill, I'm watching the drill. And he, he goes, you know, this drills for a rescue. I go, okay. I'm ju I'm just before I get promoted. I go, oh, Lou, you're telling me I can't learn, you know? So he, oh, oh, no, no. Uh, so he goes in. Then he goes in to do some. He's going to do rope work. It was before Rocco. It was just when Rocco started to do the <clears throat> the uh, the rescues. I already had, because that's where I knew Captain Murphy from. That's where I knew Kelly from. I had rescue uh, Rocco one and two. So I go into the kitchen with them and I grab a rope short. So one of the guys, I don't, I, I don't remember who he was, 
But uh, he goes, what are you going to do with that? Hang yourself? So I sit next to him because I... I <laughs> you know, he ain't going to know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> so that he can't tie the knots. I go, no, it's like this. So I tied a knot. You know, and I'm tying all the knots really quick before uh, Hatton is saying anything. So they get a run. They come back. Hatton comes right into the kitchen. He goes, um, you know, how come you know all those knots? I go, well, I don't want to step on anybody's toe. I don't want to uh, upset anybody, but, you know, I have 80 hours of Rocco. And he, all of a sudden, he was like my best friend. He goes, oh, can, can, you, uh, can you, you teach some of this? I said, sure. So I sat there, and he's going, you should come to rescue. I said, why would I come here? Because all the work that I'm getting to, um, Beat you and you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so how'd that go? Like a fart in church? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but, never liked uh, you. We even had they had a we had a job. We went and rescue was coming, and he calls over the radio and asked if I'm working. It was a uh, guy stuck on a tower or something, and he had to be lowered down. And he asked if I'm working over the radio. He goes, "Have him wait for us," you know. But uh, it turned out they had him down already. Hmm. But, uh, Give us a couple more, 138s before we get to the uh, your entrance. 138 small. stories. I got. I wrote. I wrote down. I wrote down so much stuff here. We'll get to that. Don't worry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not so slow. It's zio slow. So, so, zio slow. <laughs> I thought you spelt it wrong. Like. <laughs> but uh, Corvettes go slow. <laughs> Uh, oh, he wants a drink. The guy wants to have a little. Oh, <laughs> hey, come on! That's right. You hit it. Corvette Zio Wait, Zio, Zio Slow. <laughs> Parched for those guys that are parched out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One thing, you know, there was so many stuff, you know, and it's got to be like thirty years ago. You don't remember a lot of it. Isn't but, it amazing how stuff stuff just. You yeah. can't, and then somebody mentioned something, and then all of a sudden, yeah, that's, it, like, that's pops what happens. In. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody mentioned something. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, I got a story about that. Yeah, it's a different little file cabinet. All right, so somewhere. punch up that picture. Let's go through some of the guys that were in that picture, yeah. Gons. You ready? Oh, we got. Okay, in the uh, in the front row, you had on the left Neary, and then Captain Jim Spillane was next to him. On the row behind them, the officers were. I think that's Rotans, Jack Kane, Frank Johnson, and um, Jizz Monday. Jizz Monday? Yeah. Not not the guy that went to 116 as the captain, that guy? Uh, yes. That's the Jizz? Yeah. The Jizz. Now, he was a lieutenant there? Uh, yes. Oh, I didn't know that. In the truck or the engine? Uh, he was in the engine. Oh, man. The Jizz. You had, it's tough to see that picture. Yeah. You blow it up, bro? I have to put it in a totally different format to uh, yeah. load it up, share it's a pain in the butt. I tried yeah. to blow it up for you, but uh who's the guy all the way on the right there, Lou? Yeah. All the way standing. The, the, the guy standing up. I'm all the way on the left. Yeah. No, all I know. The right, the guy who's that the used guy to be on... the delegate for 289. I, uh, I know that guy. I know his face. That guy I know. Like, what the hell was his name, Lou? He had a really a raspy voice. Oh uh <laughs> See the, guy? the engine. Yeah, I, I, he's the first yeah, guy yeah. standing. I remember him for a lot of years. Like I remember his face. There's a few guys in the back I remember. Was Tarantini yeah. there? What was his name? Tarantini. That's that's. Tarantini way wasn't there yet. Because Tarantini got there just as I got promoted. Because he was in. Uh, I did my first tour mm. as uh, in seven truck, and uh, he was. Uh, he was detailed to seven truck. Where's uh, Big Mike? Mike. Um... Oh, uh, yeah. Kenny just said that's uh, John uh, Debo. Debo. Oh, Debo was a guy. Yeah. Right, right, right. <clears throat> yeah, I remember. I remember his face. The Benedetto. Yeah. That's him. But where is um, where is what's his name? Mike, who was the senior man there for a long time, he's waiting for his kids to get on the job. Oh, Mike Pryor. Mike Pryor. Uh, yeah. Great, you know, another great fireman. You had a lot of great firemen there. Was he there before you, bro? No, I was there before Mike. Oh. <clears throat> Is Chief Steve in this picture? 
No, Chief Steve is gone by now. He's not promoted already? Yeah, he got promoted right before my dad passed. So my dad passed in 93. Yeah. So he must have got promoted in like 90. No, he got promoted in 86. Did he? That too? Yeah. Wow. Holy shit. 87, somewhere around there. Holy crap. So, Give us yeah. some more pictures, Gans. Oh, so ones? Somebody asked for a Chief Steve story. The first, uh, when we started studying, we take a fire tech test. Now, I was studying. I was like a closet studier. And uh, we take a fire tech test, and I beat Chief Steve. You what? Got the, I, I lit the fire test. under his yeah. ass. <laughs> yeah. He was, uh, nobody was ever going to beat him again if I beat him. So uh, I beat him on that test. I didn't realize uh, you guys were in study class. I'm going to have to remind him around that. Yeah. Yeah, Patty Lee had said, this is what I had remembered. Gizmundi was one of the first guys to die from COVID. Yes. Yeah. He, he worked for uh, uh, JetBlue. Right. He was a flight attendant for JetBlue. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and he was, this... he was on a respirator for like two months or something. Some oh, crazy stuff. Nice. They used to call him Prickle. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, Good one sixteen. You know, you had a lot of great firemen there. You know, had Pryor, great fireman. Um, Mike Glenn's another good guy. Uh, Mark Matulas. You know, all of these guys. Uh, Eddie Camilleri, uh, really good fireman. Kevin. Uh, Who was Kevin, the guy that became the chief? The little guy, Danny. Dan, uh, Danny. Uh, Danny DiMartino. DiMartino. Danny. Yeah. <laughs> he worked in sock for a while as a captain. I know. I know. <laughs> he used to tell us he used to he didn't have air conditioning in his house and he used to tell he used to walk into the kids room it was like 100 degrees go oh it's freezing in here <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the mind you know what i mean it's all about it's the, the mind. mind yeah <laughs> that's the that's powerful thing bro that's a bad player he was <laughs> yeah you had smitty there too bro uh, right oh, smitty yes yeah, smitty yeah. yeah he's in georgia he's in georgia Is we're trying to get him to come to one of because we have every payday we have a lunch, mm. and he won't come down. But another guy, uh, you know, Smitty, you had uh, just trying to think. Um, Kevin McHenry, another good fireman. McElhaney was a good fireman. He he was at the um, Happy Lands fire too. Was he? Yeah. As what? As a lieutenant or a lieutenant? Yeah. Oh shit! Corona was another good. I mean, you could, you really well rounded. Uh, beca you became a well rounded fireman there, just because you had every type of building. I mean, it had you know all the trucks had such huge areas. You, 117, 136, 154, 138, all of those 116. Yeah. They all had such huge areas. 138 used to come down to Maspeth as a truck, bro. Like, how the fuck yeah. did he I mean, come yeah, one area, we, they were second the to, the they were second due to us on a oh, couple yeah. of boxes. Yep. I'm, I'm driving some new officer, and it's just before, I, again, it's just before I'm promoted, I'm going to get promoted. I'm driving some new guy who just got out of school. It's like his first tour. So we, we're heading down to Maspeth, and I can't find this thing. Turns out to be a... Uh, a kitchen fire and you know, a food on the stove and we turn around well we get another box and it's right near the firehouse this one i could find he goes you think you can find this one i go yeah i'm going to that big column of smoke and i'm stopping <laughs> so we get there and it's three private uh, private dwellings all occupied because we were, i was talking with a couple of guys i was talking with prior uh the other day, and uh, we both said the same thing. I've never been to like a vacant building in that area. Not over there, it's so we, heavily populated. It was right? so lucrative to have a house because you had all the SROs. So it's three private dwellings burning. So not for nothing, I go not for nothing. I give a second alarm. So the officer picks up the radio, goes second alarm, click. Yeah, it's like we got it already, guy. <laughs> That's it. So I pick it up. I give the whole thing. So now it's one of those crazy nights. We're there, but nobody else. So we got garden hoses. So I get on the radio. I go, uh, yeah, 138 to Queens. You have any engines coming to this? Because we're out of, we're out of ladders. You know, and they're all laughing. So Acerno was the 
It was the uh, chief in the four six. Nice guy. Yeah, he, great guy. So I knew him. Uh, he was a lieutenant in three twenty four. So I've known him for years. And uh, he uh, he comes up and he goes to the lieutenant. He goes, uh, who gave the second alarm? Because he was going to say, you know, good job. And the lieutenant goes, my chauffeur did it. <laughs> so he goes, hey, good move, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the guy was like, oh, uh, dick. You dick. But, you uh, dick. Yeah. Wow, yours is louder than mine, I think. Bro. Hold on. Sorry. See. I don't want to make you it too loud. Dick. It's bigger, too, I heard. Is it? <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> and uh, as somebody asked before, Chief Steve never called me a dickhead. No, it's me. Yes, dickhead. Yeah. Oh, you got that one too? <laughs> Remember, yes, I took them all from you, bro. <laughs> yes, dickhead. Yes. Did you catch any jobs with Chief Steve other than your study group? Uh, oh, yeah. You know, there were so many uh, that back then. Oh, when I first got there, here's a. I first get there. I don't think, I don't know if Chief Steve was there, but. Uh, like one of my first jobs there, we, we're pulling up to the building and there's a backdraft. It blows under the L, under the uh, Roosevelt Avenue. There's a backdraft. It blows the gates off of the building. Half of me, well, a third of me said, oh, man, this is crazy. And then the other two thirds said, this is cool as anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. I you, know, you know what the only problem was? Even 117, you guys, even more than us, you were a bucket. So you were constantly pissing on shit all the time oh. because you know and then of course you had yak there so it didn't you know, matter mike, well a lot of times when mike yak was what we we didn't go to those but uh yeah never really a vacant building fire nah i mean and, it's not just it's heavily populated i mean it's oh, like said, it was, it doing, we had to do vacates they had us doing vacates because the neighbor would call up and say yeah there's 20 people, people in there yeah no doubt and then he would call up on the other neighbor and say there were 20 people on this house. So we'd go vacate a whole block, you know, and then the city finally said, uh, you can't do any more of those. <laughs> no place to put these kind of like now. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we just wrote, uh, um, we just wrote so many, uh, I wrote one. I remember I had to go, I wrote a summons because I was the only one who could make it, it was in the basement, and the to get to the rooms, the area was about that big, and I was the only one who could squeeze myself down there. So it was crazy. They had they would take a one family house and have twenty five people in it. Oh yep. yeah, that's that was like SRO uh, Central over there. Yeah, yeah before I, I got into the I mean, job, I was in Con Ed, and I had to go into these people's houses. Especially like the Guyanese or the Indian, they wouldn't sleep on the floor. There would be like fucking 15 people sleeping on one bed every possible way you can imagine. Oh, yeah. Um, we had a big yeah. gate and we go there to reinspect and the doors are locked again. So me and Mark Matulis, because we seem to work together all the time, and to give the guys an idea, Mark Matulis is about six, eight, six, seven. Six, seven, huge guy. So we go, let's kick the door in. Two idiots. Go, let's kick the door. And so we don't, the door doesn't fly in, but the whole door falls in. <laughs> it was under a staircase, and there were five people sleeping in there. Wow. I think they all shit themselves. <laughs> yeah. But because uh, here's the, because it's, there's no light. And all of a sudden now there's light and two big, you know, look like the one old Sasquatch, <laughs> one Yeti. <laughs> and then all right, so let's get up to the point where you get promoted here. Okay, one more quick story about Mark Matulis. Go, do it. We go to left rack. We uh, go to the floor above. There's a fire. We go to the floor above. We're going to take the windows. I bang on the door. Guy answers the door wearing a, a guitar. That's it. Just the guitar. Just the guitar. <laughs> oh, is that the, the naked guitar guy from... I was uh, say, does he stand in the city? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Little no, no, not him. <laughs> it's a naked cowboy. Completely yeah. naked. Oh, it's a naked cowboy. Right. Naked cowboy. Well, you know. And I... I just turned around to Mark and I go, I, I go to the guy. Oh, this is Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, you meet Mark? He's big. We're, we're hanging out the window and he's trying to hit me with the hook. <laughs> but uh, all right. Uh, all right. So you get promoted in 97. Oh, I didn't know you got promoted. 97. I got promoted with uh, Tim Kelly. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Doug Sloan. Leave me alone, Doug Sloan. Leave me alone. We, all, we all got promoted together. There was like 125 guys. So they split the class in like three. The first bunch of guys went to Flips. The other guys went out to uh, wherever they were doing inspections and stuff. So I was in the first class along with, I don't know if Timmy was in there. But uh, we uh, went to Flips. And uh, another thing that uh, I wanted to bring up is uh, ILP. I was, I remember ILP as a little kid because Lee in the volleys, Albertson and Great Neck are in the same battalion. So we used to go to all the conventions together. And oh, we were shit. a lot different then because we would hang out together. We would do anything. So I remember Jonathan all the time. Jonathan right? as a little pain in the ass kid. No shit. Yeah, so. We turned into a big pin in the ass kid. I, I couldn't yeah. get that out fast enough, bro. <laughs> I mean, the guy loved going to work, though. I mean, you can't. Oh, he loved it. fire, bro. Yeah, he loved. Uh, he always wanted to work with me for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, you always got all the work. You were a black cloud. Well, yeah, maybe. That might have something to do with it. Could but, be. Uh, <clears throat> so I go to the third division. I wanted to go to the third division. And actually, uh, Lee was the one that I, I go, yeah. He goes, where do you want to go? I said, I think I want to go to the third division for a change. So I go to the third division. I'm in the eighth battalion. So uh, my first day tour, I go to seven truck. My first run was to a second alarm to the uh, Empire State Building. We never got out of the building because it's automatic, but second alarm to the first run. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, I was SA the next night, the next night tour. So I did theater inspections, you know, so that was good. I watched Titanic when that was in the in the theaters and then I went to Radio City cuz it was in the right around Christmas time. So I can't be too bad on the eyeballs. Yeah, it wasn't yeah cuz I was hanging out in the back, you know. A lot different show in the back. Yeah. Mhm. Mm I got you. <laughs> but um you know, and then Neary actually told me he said when you get promoted go to uh, go always go see the deputy. So I go to the I that next tour, I go to the deputy. I'm gonna work that night. I'm SA again that night. So I walk into the division and the chief is Vinny Dunn. So I'm like, you know, here's this uh, legend, and I'm walking in. So we're talking, and it was like a test, I guess. Um, you know, he was asking me a million questions. He goes, Oh, you know, we want to keep you in this division. You know, you've had some great bosses, and so I said, "Okay." So that we, he calls up the battalion. He goes, "Where you are? You working tonight?" I go, "Yeah, I'm SA." He goes, uh, "He goes, uh, let me, uh, let me get. Uh, I'll call the battalion, and you're going to stay up here with me tonight." So he talked all night. You know how he talks, and uh, real gentleman though. So. Uh, the next, I get the call the next day. You're doing a vacation in 22 truck. Okay. So I do that vacation. Then after that, I'm, you're doing a vacation in four truck. You go, okay. Do that, which I, I, four truck, if you ever worked in there, every time the door opens, you're blinded by flashes of cameras going off. That's crazy. You know. So uh, I didn't really care for that. I, I that's why there's not many pictures because I kind of like I kind of hid anytime there was a picture. But Vinny, uh, Vinny Dunn didn't ask you about the friction uh, coefficient, did he? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, a lot of building construction questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But uh, you know, and then uh, after that, they go, uh, "Well, you're going to be six uh, UFO in 16 engine." So the captain of 16 engine was Moran. John Moran, he was in... Oh, the Sock Chief. Sock Chief. That's whose brother said, uh, you know, Osama Bin Laden, you can kiss my Irish ass at the concert. But, I remember uh, that. He was the captain. Another guy, the guy from 138, was also a lieutenant there, a Mike Catino. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm hanging in there. And I said, this is great. I'm not bouncing. I'm, I have a locker. I have a 
regular place to go. 24s. So uh, I'm on vacation, and Mike calls me up and says, hey, there's this thing. You're perfect for it. They're going to open these new companies in SOC. He goes, I'm going to put your name in. I go, okay. So he put my name in, and uh, I forgot all about it. I get a call, and uh, some captain at headquarters saying, you never, uh, you never went down for your tryout. So it was the last day. I go down, and uh, Captain Murphy is there. So, And I stretched that line by myself. You know, I was ready to die. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we did uh, all of the stuff. I saw Timmy Kelly and, and the captain. And then, uh, like, uh, the next day, I got the call. Captain said, you want to go to 288? That was it. The rest is history. Yeah. But... It was tough, you know, like like Timmy was saying, uh, he said, you know, he was out of sock and he did mutuals with people. And then all of a sudden, the guy he did a mutual with, now he's back as a boss. You know, here I am. I go back to the same area and I knew all of those people and I'm the enemy. Yeah. You know, so that, that was tough. We were the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who was I telling the story to? Uh... Oh, yeah. Uh... Chief Jordan, I played golf with him the other day. We were saying that, uh, you know, what one of the first days I remember was uh, on Garrow. Like, you, you knew everybody hated us, right? And he was such a nice guy, you know, <laughs> so that we would pull up at a box or whatever. And then, one, you know, 136 was facing this way. We were facing this way, and we were going pot. And he would be like, hey, guys, how you doing? Yeah. Have a good night, you know? And all the guys would just be, like, looking at him, like, who the heck is it, you know? Yeah, he was you know this but, he, but he wasn't being, you know, uh, what's the word? You know, he was just being a he nice guy. Genuine. Genuine. Right, that's he was being him. genuine. He yeah. was yeah. being he genuine. Just, that's the way he was. He was. But, it, you know, when you think, when I think back and looking at those guys, they were like, who the fuck? <laughs> you know, what's this guy doing? Yeah, but it had to be harder for you. Hell you yeah. with all those guys. I worked with all of those guys. So was... that's where we were getting a lot of our work from. Was all yeah. over there, man. I yeah. never worked with the captain that was there because I was gone before he got there. Um, Maloney. Oh, the guy from the band? The big guy? Yeah, he didn't like us. Oh, he hated us, bro. We, we actually had words in the street one day. You know, that's when I learned from then on, I would tell the chief, uh, chief, tell me on the radio. So that everybody heard it rather right, than right, right. because, uh, right. Cause then they, they know you, you can always say, Hey, listen, the chief wants me to do this. I'm doing it. Whether you like it or not, I'm doing yeah. it. We're doing it. So, and that was it. Right. We're yeah. going in this room. Now there's too many guys in here. Listen, <laughs> I'm doing a secondary. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know, but then that, that, that kind of went away after a while anyway. Yeah. It took a while. Yeah. A good while though, man. It you did know? take a while. Dude, when I came I, back I, as a lieutenant, it was, it was gone, you know. I might have told the story. <clears throat> we were going over by 138, me, fucking Pee Wee, Pete Brennan, and uh, the captain says, go up and do the secondary. We go up to the floor, and there's like three guys, 138, standing in the doorway, right? So I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, man. So Pete goes, uh, excuse me. He said, nah, you know, we don't need another guy. We, we, we searched his apartment. We're good. So Peter goes, oh, no, no, I'm not coming up to search the apartment. The chief sent me up here to count how many firemen were up here. He goes, one, two, three. All right, five guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he was so piece of work. He was a piece of work, bro. Oh, <laughs> Those guys were yeah. like, what the heck? Yeah. 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 No, he was uh, he was funny. So, yeah, I think, I think before we were a squad, I think I caught uh, one of the first jobs with the, the crew. Yeah. Uh, uh, was that you that you caught the job with? <clears throat> you caught who, who caught the bowling alley? For? Oh, there he is. I had the bowling alley fire. You did, Ruffy. Yeah. Did you have that? I had that job, yeah. Yeah, we were cutting in. That was early on, yeah. Yeah, that place. Hank was at that job too, yeah. Because yeah. we had the uh, we first we didn't even go online. We got there in May, we didn't go online till July 1st, right? Yeah, so I had just... the first job as a squad. We were just yeah, engine totally 288 for a while. Right. But, uh, yeah, we had a uh, – yeah, we started – we caught a, a, a lot of a lot of good jobs in there right away. Yeah, show some of those pictures, Guns. Some you pictures ready? Of, All right. Know, 
So we have, well, we'll go through the squad ones if that's what you'd like to start with. Because the only thing I have that's, yeah, we'll go through the squad. Here we got this one. Which is one. So that was at, uh, that was the squad uh, day. Yeah, where was that? That was at, uh, like, was Metro Tech. I think yeah, we all Metro. got blessed there. That's when they blessed the rigs, when yeah, Downey right. was there and, and we first went online. Yeah. Very nice. And then you yeah, have. Yeah. Timmy, Kelly, and me were, were 24 partners. Right, and Captain and Get. Uh, yeah, I, had, I was in Captain and, and uh, Vin uh, and Garrow's group. Too. So we had we had Quick, ILP, ILP, Sweeney. Yeah, you had the troublemakers, bro. Yeah, we had we had the troublemakers. <laughs> but you know, you look at the personality of of you know Timmy Kelly and me. But it was a perfect match. Yeah, you know because we were all so mellow. John kept getting lifted out of his groups and put into the captain's groups because he had. This, we used to say he's got to go into the playpen again. The yeah. captain's got to watch him. So he'd be <laughs> remember that he'd be in the captain's groups for like three or four months, and the captain would throw him back to your group. Yeah. So I had Ronnie and Hank as my yeah, chauffeurs, yeah. and then it was me, uh, Hunter, Coobs. You had Wealthy in your groups, right, Luby? Yeah. Wealthy yeah. was in your groups. I have a good Wealthy story. I know it's it's the one on Six Sixth Street. I bet. Uh, well, there's, there's six six, and then there's another one. All right, but uh, well, the sixth street. I'll do it now. Um, we get a. It was a top floor fire, in like a three story, and uh, blowing out the windows. So me and I help. I help is. I mean, uh, wealthy has the nozzle. So where mm-hmm. we get to the apartment, and it was like a perfect teaching moment. First do. We're first do at this. Point. First do. It's a perfect teaching moment. You could look across the floor, and like six inches off the floor, it was clear as a bell. Hmm. So we were searching the apartment. But it's burning all over on top of us. And Hill, Bill Hill, comes walking up. Ah. He goes, what the F are you guys doing? (laughs) There he is. Yeah, he's Billy. (laughs) But the fire is dripping down like on top of us. But we had a teaching moment. You know, you also your... had the job that we had that with a guy, the fat guy fell on Louis Lake with 140 that time. On, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, you want to get out? That was a good job. Yeah, that was, uh, I put in, I was just looking through all, I put in a unit citation for that job. Yeah, we got knocked. We shouldn't have, man. We were in there, right? The chief, the only saw was a line going in the building, was, <laughs> yeah. and the thing was totally off the and it was, uh, where are you guys? <laughs> it was in there. <laughs> yeah. But you know, where we were standing, right, Lou, where we were standing. It was like this. That was the only. That was the only spot you could yeah, be. It wasn't on fire. Yeah, like, I it, was it wasn't on fire. <laughs> yeah, that was the only spot that wasn't. I mean, on if fire. you look through the, it was a railroad flat. If you look <laughs> through the front, you know, to the back door towards the kitchen, you could see fire. And then yeah. we turned around, and then there was fire coming out the back door, going up the stairs, and yeah. we were like in this spot, but it was getting closer and closer. Well, and Brennan wouldn't turn the line. He wouldn't well, give me the no, line. We, we, we finally turned the line, and then, you know, ILP dives out, and then uh, I don't think – you weren't in. Were you, Were you, Kev? Were you? Uh, oh, no, you're, you're, you're the one that was lighting up behind us. I told you it was lighting up behind yeah. us, but then 291 opened up a two and a half and knocked my face piece off my face. Yeah, so you were out. Uh, then I told Brennan, dive out. And me and you are holding the line. And you're like, oh, my leg, my leg. So I think I grabbed you when I... I, I went, fl- I tumbled out of... Yeah. Everything went black. What I remember was oh. it was orange, like really orange. And I remember saying in my head, you know, like I see a snapshot that says fireman die in mass with blaze. Oh, oh Lord Jesus, Lord, help me, Lord Jesus. Yeah, Lord, and then Jesus. next thing I know, everything went black. And yeah. I mean, to- like they, like you said, they mm-hmm. opened up the line from the street. Yeah. And then the guys jumped off the stair, like onto us. And then... Yeah. I just remember yeah. rolling out into the front. I, I helped you out. Yeah, I, I remember rolling out. Go, Helmets were flying no everywhere. Here. Yeah, we were on the stairs, like laying out on the stairs. Like, yeah. But then know, me and Lou B wound up getting the nozzle and putting the rest out yeah. from like. Yeah, we. Uh, I think I was backing you or Brennan up. Brennan, Brennan was, was out at that time. Yeah, and so we're, Brennan, we're, you guys went in. Brennan went in, and then I went in, but I was like leaning on the floor, like yeah. backwards. Like just the, going in, the but only you guys were already came back in there was rescue. Yeah, it was us it and was rescue. Just us and rescue. Yep. And that, that was, was the that was the uh 
they were, they were varnishing poly, the floor. Polyurethane, polyurethane in the floor. Polyurethane in the floor. But and they, where we were, I mean, I looked in there, and there was nothing. And we could see the fire from the back from that hallway. Yeah, so, no, it was ripping in there. Yeah. And then nice. not, not so much. Yeah. Nah. So uh, let's get into the story that I've been waiting to tell. So it's a hot summer night. Let me start it like this. It's a hot summer night. Lou B is working. Petey Brennan, Ruffy, uh, who else was there? Patos, and one, one more person. Who else was it? Dirienzo. Dirienzo. And Ruffy says to me, Ruffy's up for the detail to Hazmat. And he's like, Coops, come on, please. I, I don't want to, I can't work in Hazmat tonight, Coops. Take, take my detail for me. I'm like, all right, bro, I'll take the detail for you. So we're laying in bed. It's got to be like one, two in the morning. Boo -doo. They go out the door. About, I don't know, 10 minutes later, announcing Queen, second alarm. I'm like, that motherfucker Refrano. I swear <laughs> to God, for Christ's sake. Five minutes later, the boop, department boop, phone boop. rings. Full <laughs> blood. Department phone. I pick up the phone. It's these fucking assholes calling me from the floor above. <laughs> I, it's a true story. These assholes <laughs> calling me from the floor above to fucking rub it in my face. That <laughs> oh, Johnny Walters. Too. <laughs> so hold on. It's not. It's not the floor above. When so was it? adjoining apartment. It was the adjoining building. So we went. We we had. What was it? I don't know how many uh, taxpayers, Lou B. How many would you say? Uh, five. Yeah. Five yeah, right on Queens Boulevard. So yeah, it was on Queens Boulevard. So we were out there dicking around, forcing doors, doing all of this stuff for whatever it was, an hour down there, whatever it was. And then the chief, now it's through the roof. We lose the buildings. And the chief says to us, squad, do me a favor. The exposure is a five-story or six-story apartment building. Check the second floor for us and just make sure we're not getting any fire going into the building, you know. Because they started with the towel at us. Towel at us, and they broke the window. They broke the window. So we get up there, and we force the door into the apartment, and now we get in there, and uh, we basically, there was nothing, you know, it was kind of a done deal. You know, we had already worked for probably an hour or two, right, whatever it was, and then we were just, he wanted us to stay there, make sure, until they had some other fire knocked down, because it really was, you could see the fire on the outside of the window. Yeah. And then, you know. We uh we somebody came up with the idea. Hey, we got to go cool scoops. And I don't know who had the I don't know who had the the camera, but uh that, that was so you could see the the towel out of there. You could see the W always makes fun of me because I when I pulled up the taxpayer was about I don't know a hundred feet, two hundred feet more than that, two hundred feet into the off the corner, and I pulled on the corner, and by the end of the uh, the operation the fire was all the way to the to the corner yeah. so uh the chief came over and said something he's like you know you should be parked in front of the fire building i'm like uh chief it wasn't the fire building when i got here you know what i mean so it was just yeah. uh w always makes fun of that all the time yeah. but uh, yeah we were well that was the one we were uh we were sitting louis had to uh make a deposit oh i had to drop the kids off at the pool that's the right rounds so, of the uh, super bowl woo! Here, thank god for now, that it's in the morning and where it's on the news, this fire. So we're sitting on the couches in this people's apartment with the TV on, watching the fire on TV. And, and it's all smoky. That picture, we can't find that picture. But uh, it's all smoky, and there we are, a bunch of idiots sitting there watching the fire. I don't know the camera. Anyway, so let's call was calling me. Oh. <laughs> calling you. Now, who's, uh, whose dog is barking? Is that yours, Ruff? That's mine. That's oh. mine. Kill it, will you? Kill it. <laughs> That's his baby. Yeah. Hey, give us some more pictures, like, guns. Yeah. What else he got? Like, yeah. All right. Let me go. Uh, let me go. Let me do this one because maybe this has a little something here. Okay. That's another. We we went to the Intrepid. They were going to do an exercise where they were going to rappel uh, down uh, on the on the Intrepid, the uh, special forces. So it turns out to be cloudy, and we can't do it. We get a, uh, and we had, of course, driving. We had Magellan Murphy. They get a a, a fire in uh, eighteen. Squad eighteen is out of service. They get a fire in Manhattan, and they send us. So we get there, like as the first two units are pulling up. That's how, I mean, Jerry, of course, knew exactly where. 
we were going. And it's a loft building. And the fire is, um, they must have added a, another floor, similar to the bowling alley. The fire is between them. And we're cutting. Um, is Wealthy there? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. 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 So, uh, oh, yeah. Hold on, Luby. Yeah, so to the right, all the way to the right is Jonathan Iolpi, uh, then yeah. Timmy Wealthy. Both of those guys passed 9-11. And then you have uh, Paulie Patsos. You got uh, Hangstrom there, Jerry Murph. You got Tooth Pac, which uh, Timmy, Timmy Murphy, Timmy Murphy, and then Lou B. Yeah. So we, we go there and we're cutting this floor. You know, we, we the the saw kept stalling because there was no air. Yeah. And uh, we had to go. Wealthy was going to the window and kept starting it so we can go back and pull more. Nice. And it was some uh, some fire that day. That's it's a good too, man. Give us more, Gons. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Right. Here's here. another one. Right. The same oh, picture from before, here. right? Let's say yeah. squad five. Yeah. We got this guy right here. There's everybody. Oh, wow. That's uh, most of the guys from the squad. You know, I don't have that picture. No? Not that one. What I have the doing? other one. I don't have that one. It's in your email. <laughs> you have on the right, me, Quickie. Who's Doc right. Hollywood in the front there? Hmm, I wonder. Some dick <laughs> with hair. <laughs> with hair at the time. With hair. Look at that wig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you look here, you got, uh, let's see, Quick's not here with us. That's er Eric Allen. Eric Allen. Middle. What is behind Eric Allen is Sweeney. He's gone. Uh, Joe Hunter, he's gone. Wealthy, gone. Iopi, gone. Brennan, gone. Seven guys out of that photo. Yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. That's crazy. That is that Rufrano with the uh, aviators he's, in the background? There, he's, back, he's got the, uh, the aviators uh, phrase. We don't have what's going on. <laughs> his goof forget on. Yeah, do. Put a little goof. Forget about that. The Procaccini <laughs> cool with a nice rug. Yeah. Uh, we got yeah this, this is from uh, Paul Hashagan's book, in 2000. This was before 9 11, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then we have this squad pick here. It's a little hard to make out, but this was a Christmas party. Yeah. Might have been our first Christmas party. I yeah, what? Adam Rand is there. Kerwin's gone. Ronnie Geese is gone. Who, if well, you went if back, is there, it's, it's Ami Gardner there. is in that picture. Yeah. And, and yeah, Dennis Carey. You said Dennis Carey, Coops? Dennis yeah. Carey's behind me. <clears throat> yeah. From the hazmat. Yeah. Wow. That's great. He was a good guy, Dennis. Oh, he was yeah. such a great guy, man. Both of those guys. Uh, Tommy Gardner, one of my favorite yeah, guys, yeah. man. Oh yeah, funny, funny Dude, guy. Uh, Carry, remember he got the uh, he was using a nail gun that shot back and hit him right in the eye, and yeah, he lost, lost one his eye. Yeah. yeah. And every year, you know, we do the uh, firehouse uh, Christmas wish list. You have to put in pencil in whatever you thought a guy should get, and every year it would say uh, Dennis Carry. It's all funny games till somebody loses up. Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and he was still on the job. He still did the job. Oh, he got back on the job with one eye. <laughs> Whoopsie. It's all funny. Again. Another guy <laughs> used to, the whoops. Ielpi used to uh, always attack Neil Yank. And Neil oh, Yank. Yeah. Was oh, he was Neil, a 138 guy. Neil yeah. Yank was in 138. That's really right. good climbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why, he, you know, Yank was uh, he was at the end of his career, and Ielpi didn't give him any respect because he was kind of, yeah. you know, on the way out. didn't you know? really give many people respect. That's really true. good climbing. I saw that man cat climb up a, a hook, hook it on the fire escape and climb up. Neil he's, Yank? Yeah. Yeah. He's not wow. in this photo, is he? It's no. kind of hard to make now. Okay. Uh, I help his sons in the chat. We're just talking about your old man. Oh, Very yeah. Well. Nice. All right. We got this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you going to say, Lou? No, you can put that up. All right. I, I, hope, he's in, uh, I hope he's in that picture, too. Yeah. No, he's not. Oh, he is. Yeah. I hope he's on the left. You got Quickie. Who would we say that was? Fontana, right, from Squad yeah. Squad 1, yeah. I believe. I don't know if it, that's where he worked at the time. But that's Lou B. Koobs is on the bottom. And uh, Pete Peter Brennan. Brennan. <clears throat> yep. So. Nice. All right, yeah. we got just a couple left here. We have the – well, we could show this one. This one do you have from all you guys. That was the 20th. 20th anniversary. Anniversary. Yeah, somebody in the chat had asked, is anybody still there from the charter members? No, that would no. be a negative. No. 
Nice. All right. Well, we have. I was the last. I mean, I was a lieutenant then, but. <clears throat> All right. I have this one here. A little hard to so that make. Was, uh, when I was doing those lunches. Are we going to do them again or what? Yeah, I'm going to start them up again next month. All right. Maybe we'll try to do it next month. So find out when Hanky Panky's going home. He's here for a while, I think. Oh, yeah? yeah. All right. I have two photos left. One I'm going to save, LT, for uh, yeah, when you're ready. That. But then we have this one, a little flashback throwback we could have shown earlier. But, you know. Yeah, that, that was when we was started the squads again. We had to all repel from Conard's uh, smokestack. So those those stacks are when you're if you're going over to Triborough Bridge, you could see those stacks. They're they're uh, not too far from the rock. Yeah, and, right, across, uh, right across the river, actually. Yeah, what are they? Three hundred feet high. Yeah, when you step off, here. when you step off of that feet. grading there, you're, uh, you're your your ass is puckering a little bit. The guys, <laughs> you can tell the guys that are confident in the rope, they're leaning back. The guys that were really up close. <laughs> <laughs> The thing they were a little nervous. I love being on rope, man. <clears throat> and the last we, uh, one is, is that little guy right there. Just a little share that. So we were, we were doing it right. I was there at the same time as Quickie, and the whole thing was uh, everybody be on their best behavior. Downey's coming over. Every, make sure everything is checked. We you know we were backing up the system the whole nine yards. He walks down into the catwalk. Here comes fucking Quick single sliding himself down. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck! Are you me, bro? <laughs> I don't remember that story. <laughs> like, he just went flying by. Fucking Cat shit. Murphy must. Cat Murphy must have been Holy like, "What Christ. the heck?" I think Cat Murphy took all those pictures, if I remember right. Uh, I think it was my camera. I had a. Was I, it? Yeah. But I remember him taking, snapping the pictures of that. I don't know. Maybe it was you. I don't know. Maybe I, I got it wrong. Or maybe we just say it's you. Maybe we just say he, you know. Took yeah. it and it's somebody else. I don't know. You still have your picture of that, Coops, repelling? I do somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have it. Yeah, I, I was taking them and I was giving the pictures out. I remember that. I remember getting the picture. Yeah. yeah. And what else? You got one more? That's it, man. I have well, one more. I'm waiting for uh, Tony. Wait Tony to get a, let me know when you're ready for that one. Yeah. It's a special one. Well, we'll hold off because we still. Who, uh, who, were you, who were you closest with as the bosses? Like, who was. You know, was it Vinny? Was it uh, Timmy? Like, who do you feel? Or was it just uh, well, cut, probably you know? Timmy? Because I saw him, you know, on the change, and then Hoppy. You know, me and Hoppy were uh, a great guy, Hoppy, right, man? Yeah, I used He'll to never come on the him. show. Though. I used to torture him, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, well, I guess yeah. But, well, after nine eleven, nine eleven came, and you know, we lost all of those guys. And uh, that was, uh, that was um, you know, a tough time for all of us. I, but uh, then uh, where we go after that? It, then Hoppy came because Kerwin, Kerwin was there for a little while. Hoppy came. And Hoppy used to sit there and not do anything. So you talk about calling people up. I used to, as soon as he left, he would get down the block. And we would get a fire. So, <laughs> so I started calling him up. <laughs> Evans is now the captain. I started calling him up. So here I am. I had the cell phone at the time. And I, I'm walking down the hallway here. Uh, yeah. Uh, John, uh, I got to ask you a question. Oh, hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and, when, you know, I'm calling him up. And I'm calling him up every time I had a job. I was calling him up. Two o'clock in the morning, I'd call him up. Evans uh, ordered me not to call him up anymore. <laughs> I was making it crazy. I can't tell you though, nobody drilled or was a hard charger like that guy, bro. Oh, yeah, he, just... he came in full. I remember I only had him for, I got promoted in June of 02. So again, you talk about after 9 11, we weren't really doing much. And then we started to wean off of going down to the site. And then we started getting back into, we had a lot of new guys and we started drilling. So I only had him for a few months. Mm. Yeah. And and then after mm-hmm. after I got promoted, you know, I would hear from Coobs, you know, he's like, dude, we're fucking running up the stairs with the, the, the Hearst tool, you know, 20 flights. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You know, like, mm-hmm. and uh, it was, that it was, was ho- you know, copy had guys, you know, he had all the new guys, Velarde, uh, Ren Terry, Eddie Sanchez, Dunnick, right? He had all those guys lined up 
Yeah, that was squared, square, away. squared away, knew the yeah. ropes, were solid. Yeah. You know, it was a really they they put put the company back together. You know, he was definitely uh, you know because then I know Vinny got promoted too. You know, right after that. Yeah, Vinny got promoted right after. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, I worked with him when he was in two thirty five as the captain. I was bouncing as lieutenant. I would do vacations with him, but um, you know, it was it was always good to come back. You know, Tadeshi got there then, right? He well, was Tadeshi really got my spot, right? When I left, yeah. So you're talking Tadeshi was spot. there. Uh, Pickford got the spot not too long after that, I believe. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, can the, you read uh, that, Lou? Can you read that? Can you read Andrew Lavazzano? Yeah, I know him. Yeah. Pee-wee I know. Pee Wee's with a 9 11. Pee Wee. Pee wee, pee wee. Yeah, pee wee. I, I thought somebody had said that has anybody left in the squad from the charter members? I know that Corrado's still on the job, but he's on the I, I thought somebody had asked if anybody's is still he the, on the only squad. one that's still on the job. Out of the charter members, I believe he is. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. I think Timmy Murphy is. Oh, yeah, he t- oh, was Murphy. Was, oh, was no, Murphy. I think he just retired. He just retired. I okay. called him up, he did some electrical work at my house. Oh, but um. Uh, the Paulie Baldwin was driving me. Oh, Paulie B. Yeah, and uh, we get a job at the restaurant depot. I worked for that one. We drive <laughs> down the block. It's a great story though. With one thirty six. Yeah, I right to the fence. <laughs> We're driving down the block, and I go, Paulie, is that smoke? He goes, No, it's the morning mist. And then you see <laughs> <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds perfectly coming from him too. Yeah. It's the morning. Is going weep. Whoa! It's it's blowing out like green smoke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I get missed seventy five. I get out, and you know here I am. I'm the uh, that guy. I I break the uh, the box because there's a gate. I'll give everybody the picture. There's a gate. It's about fifty feet long, and it. it it has a motor in it would open big I beam on top and it about 14 feet high. So I break this box open and I start shorting the wires together. So the first one I short it's going the wrong way. So I start shorting the other wire and I hear <laughs> look out. You have to wait. <laughs> All of a sudden 136, 136 plows through the fucking gate, bro. Plows through the gate. The I beam bounces off of the ladder. I mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guy, it's a bull he's in it's wrapped around the front of the rig it looks like a <coughs> it's wrapped all the way around the front of it they can't get out of the rig because it hit this thing it's bent oh it's got to say Paulie Archer it was Paulie Archer yeah it was Paulie Archer so I'm over there and I'm holding the, the gate so they can back up so they can get out and the officer was like a new guy and uh, watch out, I don't. <laughs> yeah, watch out. That's all I heard. Yeah. And out of the corner of my eye, I see a rig, you yeah. know. It's the morning mist. So, uh, did, yeah. so the hat, did it work? It was, yeah, oh, fun. yeah, it worked. Yeah. Well, dude, he, I mean, he can't, it wasn't like he just, he it was wrapped around the rig, like a yeah, backdrop. I wish I had a camera to take a picture of it. That's how cool it was. I had to hold it so they could back up so they can get out of the did rig. They break the windshield, they broke the windshield, the mirrors. <laughs> The ladder probably was, was worthless. Who, Paulie Archer? Rescue for Paulie Archer? No, Paulie Archer from 136. 136. I'm saying, but they, they, is that the guy who ended? Did he end up going to? Uh, no. no, different Paulie Archer. I don't Archer. think so. No. But, um, That's Larry Archer. Oh, Larry Archer, my yeah. bad. Yeah. So uh, the officer gets out of the rig, and the guy is white. I go, gee, I hope I'm right, and this is, really is a job. <laughs> I thought the guy was going was gonna to wet his pants. He was so... Uh, Green. It turned out he to was be, green too. Yeah. It yeah. turned out to be we. They forced that door, and it was it was the insulation around one of the freezers, and the freezers there were like as big as a house, and the smoke was green. Mm. It was really. This uh, was like a job for husband. Coops, do you remember when we had the job when we first became the squad? I don't know if you were working. It was. Uh, I know Cat Murphy was working, and it was me and Hunter. We kept going back to the fucking restaurant depot because the garbage compact. Garbage cut. You were working. Uh, the cardboard compact. that kept going. Right, so they had that huge. You we know, had to be there five times. Had, had like like steel, like this thick, like an inch thick, right? Oh, yeah. Like this garbage compact. So finally, Cat Murphy says, "What we're gonna do?" Because we tried to pour water into the thing. It just people kept calling. He's like, "I want to cut a hole with the 
What was the torch we had with the, the rod? You know, be oh, like yeah. uh, exothermic, exothermic, exothermic torch, right? So Hunter was like a fucking so the best surgeon. is so the best is the, the, the compact is literally we're up against the fence inside of the fence, but the compact is only like less than a two feet away from the fence. So we're like this, and as you use that thing, it burns so fast, but it yeah. spits slag at you right so shooting stuff all over the place yeah he's got this whole thing we're like covering him and everything right and he makes this little this little hole like this you know like a little square like that whatever it was like uh 12 by 12 and we were able to get the line in there and do it and uh i says you know i'm never used i'll never use that thing again like there's no way it, we could have just yeah. filled it up like just like a swimming pool you know what i mean yeah. but it was a great that was a great tool but you had to know how to use it yeah he was he was good he with was it. good at yeah. it bro he was, like was, good, with, too, he was good with everything yeah he was good with yeah. everything that son of a bitch then we had a uh, extrication <laughs> were you at that extrication when the guy was coming off of the uh, expressway you know when you it's bad when the construction workers are banging on the firehouse door <laughs> So we, we uh, get there, and it's one of those little Mercedes, two-door Mercedes. And uh, I'm thinking it's – I'm trying to think. I don't know if it was before or after 9-11. But uh, this guy, he's sitting here, and the tree that he hit is over here, except the door is over here. So that he's sitting the – the tree went right through. Oh my we god! Figured, and luckily for this guy, he turned out he you know he kept moaning cop. So we figured maybe he's a cop. So we we how are we going to get this guy out of this car? The tree is on the other side of him. So we uh, first we tried to cut the tree and we couldn't do it because so, it was too far under the car. Then we uh, we grip hoist. The uh, the car away from the tree. I know you're not supposed to do that, but it was the only way to get the guy out. We pulled the car off of the tree. We had to put, um, I think it was 140 was there. We had to put their jaws to hold the car from closing up. We cut the, another thing we're not supposed to do, we cut the nader pin and the hinges with the cutter, which broke the next day when we went to test them. <laughs> but, Most uh, old ones? The old ones. Now today it's like butter. It's not for no, it was we were testing the new one. It oh, had it the gold, uh, gold, gold tip. Yeah. And uh, tested it all right. We cut them and then we pushed the door out. Well, a paramedic was sitting next to the firehouse, so they followed us. This guy had everything going for him. He was out of the car and at the hospital in less than twenty minutes. That's how fast it was. Golden went. hour, baby. Let's just say the golden hour. Yeah. Golden yeah. Arches. Maybe he wasn't saying cop, maybe he was saying cock. The golden oh. arches. We have the golden <laughs> arches. No, he was. <laughs> he turned out. ESU big showed mix. up. He's, the big mix. He's on my cock. <laughs> no chief showed up. No rescue. It was just us in 140. Doing it. And it probably worked out better for that guy because it was just uh, um, ESU up? showed up. And the guy said, it was one of those accidents that you look at and you go, whoa, yeah. you guys got it. And that's basically what he said. <clears throat> and uh, I told the ESU cop, they were standing by. I told the ESU cop, I think this guy might be a cop. So they said, all right, we'll follow him to the, we'll follow him to the hospital, you know, and we'll tell everybody we got him out. But uh, sorry for all my U ESU friends. But, Mike. Uh, oh, that Mike's Mike. Mike. It turned out. It turned out he was a cop, and he had uh, his gun on his ankle, and he hit the tree so hard that the gun came off and was wedged under the dashboard because the cop came back to the firehouse. He said, I have to, you know, Lou, I have to say, uh, your guys did an amazing job. And uh, then because I, after I left the fire department, I worked for, with a bunch of ESU cops. And they said, it must have been really good because that guy doesn't say anything good about anybody. Is that right? But it was one of those where, and he, I think he only messed up his ankle or something. Oh. I guess, you know, uh, the liquor was helping him. When, when you got out in 2003, what was? Uh... 2003. Well, I was there. Don't get me all the clamped. It was, a, it was a very smoky fire all the way out in Bayside. I remember it was like it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. It was, right? 
Rocky yeah. Basement Fire in Bayside. Yeah. And you, well, you, you know what? To, like I, I knew it was in 2002 in June. I ended up in the hospital after after we finished everything. I waited till then because I had this pain in my chest for like two weeks. And I went to the hospital and I had uh, my lung was full of fluid. So I knew I was getting sick. Mm. And, uh, you know, and I wouldn't want to do the job if I I wouldn't want to be on the job if I couldn't do it. Mm. So uh, got on the bus himself, though. Didn't go out on a stretcher. Yeah, I wasn't going out. But, uh, yeah, and then later on that year in 2002, the Chicago Tribune did that story on me. Um, it was uh, scars still burn for the firefighters. You can Google it. It was me. It was uh, the Vidge. He took four, four, four different uh, people. I was the rebuilding part of the, mm. the article. And I said, oh, I'm not going anywhere. But then, you know, I started getting, I started, I knew it. You know, I couldn't even walk up a flight of stairs. You know, I was hiding. But, oh. uh, and then that fire that did me in. Yep. So, but before we get to the old school tip of the day, I got to bring up one more thing. Like you just said, when you say things, you, it triggers a memory. Yeah. Do you remember we got called for the birth imminent Oh, 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 yeah, that was a story that I wanted to say. Dude, so we get this call, and all it says on the ticket is birth imminent. We're like, oh, fuck, man. So we go up to where Reef Park is. Oh, let, me, out, let, let me tell it because <laughs> it's disgusting. I, I was at the door. I go to the door. These guys are getting all the stuff. I go to the door. I'm knocking on the door. Nobody's answering. So I try the door, and it opens. And now I'll lay the, I'll lay the thing out for you. Here's this really dark staircase. And there's a bulb hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> he ain't lying, I bro. love it. I love how that, that it sets he the stage lying. perfect. It so, sets the stage perfect. You know how I, a I, single I, bulb hanging. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm, I'm going, yeah, fire department, fire department. This woman appears, and I can't really make it out. <clears throat> but it looks like she's holding something. But she's a, she appears, and all I could see is her pants are around her ankles, and she looks like she's holding something. So I look up, and as I'm looking up, the placenta comes out. <laughs> it a swing. Just, dude, it's it's like a fucking pendulum on a cuckoo clock. <laughs> fucking thing is just swinging out of a vagina. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. That was, that was it for me. I'm I'm I'm. I'm, I'm <laughs> the best what? part is we get up there. What? There's blood everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> her father is sitting at a table. In the kitchen, drinking a beer, drinking a beer, but no exaggeration. There has to be eight hundred empty beer cans all over the fucking apartment, mm. and all he's sitting there, he's drinking his beer. He's like, "What is that thing? What? What is that? How old is that thing? He yeah, how old is that? That's your granddaughter, bro." I go, I go about <laughs> ten minutes. So he's in his underwear. <laughs> So now this blood, he had it in the in the toilet bowl. She had the baby in the blood toilet bowl everywhere. It looks like a murder scene. So uh, he goes over, door open, drops his pants and, and takes a pee. Yeah, he's standing in the, in the blood. And then he walks out, doesn't clean his feet. He walks out and the blood is all over the place. Yeah. And Timmy and Patsos cut the cord yeah. and the fucking placenta. We put it, it looked like fucking veal cutlet. You just bought five pounds of veal cutlet and you put it in a plastic bag. And... <laughs> I just told Jake, Jake wealthy, wealthy, wealthy that story uh, on 9-11. I just told wealthy, him to him on 9-11. Wealthy would not give up that kid until he gave it. The baby was cute, man. Yeah, the baby was cute. But we wrapped it all up. In the and silver he would not give that kid. He yeah. goes, he said, these people are skills. I don't want to give this kid up. Was that the one where Wealthy opened up the thing and it shot everything all over the place, yeah. the bag? Yeah, that man. was the one, right? I yeah. was yeah. telling the kid that. Well, like, telling, it was... It got me. I was I was so yeah, rattled. Wealthy knew exactly what to do. Is you know, I'll pull. I'll put you put a clamp here. Put a clamp there. I'm gonna make the cut right here. Yeah. Like, but yeah. and, and the but two EMS guys. Two EMS, that was dude, it. I, yeah. It looked like a, a pendulum on a clock swinging out of vagina. <laughs> I'm going. Hey, where's the where's the form? Can you go down and get the? Form? <laughs> Somebody said, "Hey, Lou, you're standing on it." The form. The form. The form uh, uh, clipboard. Yeah. But wealthy, we had to go to the hospital. We did. Wealthy rode in the ambulance, and 
only gave that kid up to a nurse. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, he wouldn't give that kid. Yeah, man. Did you get a unit for that? Nope. Uh nope. Uh, even the no nope. well, even the uh the Patsos when he made that grab that time, I mean I wrote it and I gave it to uh I gave it to the captain. He he wrote it and made some changes. Then we gave it to the Vidge and he wrote it. He went over and uh over it. And then the chief, the division chief, he kept saying, Oh, you didn't send it. We didn't get it. We didn't get it. So I called him. I'm outside of the I'm outside because we had the cell phone in the rig. I'm outside of the, of the quarters. And I call him up. Hey, Chief, can I stop by? I want to give you that uh, report. Oh, yeah, sure. I caught him as he was running down the stairs because <laughs> he was going to get in the rig and leave. Yeah, well, you know what that was about. Yeah, they, they were, were, they were out of position. So you don't want to yeah. embarrass his company. I pushed the guy allegedly. in the window. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Possibly. All right, Possibly. so before we get to the old school tip of the day, what is it? That, is there a picture for me? What do you want to show me? What is it? What do you got? Oh, we want to show you, uh, like, a, go ahead. A fast, yeah. a fast car. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's, That's a, a fast car. That's your VO6? Z06. Oh, the Z, right. Well, you what know is what? that? Likes to play 18 till I die? Yeah. That's nice. Pretty, that's pretty cool. I like that. But you know what? I happen to have a little bit of my own footage. I figured so. you were going <laughs> to. <laughs> Guns, could you please pull up the footage? Mine's a video, though. I okay. figured you were going to drop that. But <laughs> yeah, just leave it like that, Gonzo. Perfect. <laughs> you guys, you got to get rid of the other one, you meathead. You got to take the that's top you, picture cool. off, bro. No, that's you perfect. Gonzo, yeah, what? You got to pull the top picture off so you can see. Oh, it. my bad, my bad. What the yeah, look at the time, the What the fuck is look, that? I was look at, about look at the time. <laughs> the guy well, that was you know, driving the vet didn't know how to one twenty. We're gonna just uh, right, right here. We go. Okay, here we go. Right. Oh, I think that's a ZO six. Oh, that's a new one. Oh, that's a Hellcat, right? Yeah. Oh, Spy. See you, eighteen till that's I die. That's a vet. That's not mine. <laughs> How do you even know who won? You look at the wait, tabs, wait, right? Yeah, yeah. Twelve forty-three, twelve seventy-seven. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not. That's only a toy. That's only yeah. like uh, four hundred and sixty horsepower. <laughs> I knew I was gonna get him, bro. I had him. I got him ready. Look. <laughs> All right, now it's time. Come up with something. That's why I said <laughs> you know that. it. <laughs> All right, so you know what time it is, Ruff? I know what time it is. It's time for my fast. I laughed a lot. Look, my face hurts. Hold it's, on a second. Oh, but Gonzo might have it. Oh, uh, you ready? You go. I got it. Go ahead. All it's right. Time it's for the old school tip, tip of, the, of day. the day. 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 It's all you, Lieutenant B. Take it away. All right. All right. Well, you know, you covered a lot of stuff over the years, but uh, you know, I I wanted to reiterate one thing that that has to be done is you constantly, constantly have to go over the basics. You have to know how to stretch a line. You have to know how to put a ladder up because those are the things that, you know, you could take all the ropes out you want, but at the end of the day, you need to know how to do those things and you have to do them in your sleep. Um, stretching a line, forcing a door, all of those things you need to constantly, constantly go over. And then the other thing I would probably say is always take those books out, read them and study, constantly try to advance yourself. I mean, anything you could do on the outside, you know, like uh, we took Rocco. We, I mean, I had a degree in uh, fire science. You got to do those things because uh, it's really, really important. And that's it. Good stuff. Be always back to the basics, right? I mean, always it back matter. to the basics. How, how many times are you going to set up a, 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 a high point in your in your life, right? Yeah. Not we, that often. I mean, you know, you yeah. have to be good when you do it, but, you yep. know, you have to, you know, you could put up ladders, uh, you know, a couple times a week, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's important B -T -T -B, to do that. B -T -T -B, back to the yeah. basics, bro. I remember that day we did that? We we had that extrication where the guy fell down the hole behind that. Kevin, you were there behind oh, the uh, building. ESU was there before us, and then we took it over. Yep. And uh, don't say that. Mike gets all upset about the issue. 
Uh, <laughs> but uh, he, uh, I, I always, when they drilled on this stuff, I always said, hey, guys, uh, you got to do a lot of this stuff, especially in the beginning, when the officer isn't there, because we have to sell it. You know, we had to sell it to the chief that day. Right, right, right. I like that, bro. We got to sell it to the chiefs. We had to sell it to the chief. You know, I haven't they, heard that yet. Yeah, that's the unique one. What right are these there, crazy bro? ropes that you have? So, uh, yep. you know, we had to sell that to the chief. And that day, those people were out of there. We made, that day we made, <clears throat> sorry, Mike, we made ESU look terrible. Did you get a unit for that? Um, no. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what do we got on Thursday, Ruff? We have a guy from uh, Maine. Portland, Maine, yes. Portland uh, or Banger? Portland? Portland, yeah. It takes uh, um, a uh, – did 30 years in, in Portland. I, I saw some of the picks, man. Awesome stuff. And he right. also is like a history, quote-unquote, buff. He does oh, a lot like of that. stuff up there with the history. You're going to love it because he's got some stuff from like the 1700s That's and everything. Cool. So he sent a lot of pictures. So I think he sent like 80 pictures that gone. So, right. so we got uh, oh, on great. November 9th, we got Chief of Department Hodgins coming on November 9th. We got a whole bunch of mm-hmm. guys in between there. And one last thing. Here is the new shirt that we got. Uh, we sent out. It should be <clears> to <throat> us fairly soon, Gans. Leather Forever, bro. Coming out soon. Did you want to mention... Uh, Commissioner Safer, mm-hmm. I think, just passed away, right? Yes, yes. I also wanted to thank, again, one more time, I wanted to thank uh, Jamie and the boys at One Source. Uh, Gant, if you want to run their thing, and then we'll do the thing for Commissioner Safer. Sir, here we go. Equip your fire and rescue emergency response personnel with the equipment they need to save lives and keep themselves as protected as possible while in harm's way with safety equipment from One Source Fire Rescue. Our comprehensive supply company provides the life-saving implements emergency responders need to be prepared for any situation. With dependable quality products by reputable companies such as Traeger, Viking Life Saving Equipment, Fire Hooks, Crew Boss, Kuriyama Fire Hose and Nozzles, Phoenix Technology, Helmets, Vanguard Gloves, Tempest Fans, Ready Rack, Black Diamond Boots, and much more. Our quality products are competitively priced to meet your budget criteria. One Source was established in 2012 and continues to strive to provide not only the best products on the market, but customer service. One Source has been and continues to be committed to meeting all new and demanding challenges in the firefighting industry with the highest quality and the most dependable products. Very cool. Those guys are good over there. G- uh, Jamie and Big Bill. Love those guys. And um, yes, we wanted to mention uh, uh, Safer. He was also he was not only the police commissioner, he was also the fire commissioner. Mike, if you want to chime in, I know you You've talked to him, right, Mike? You have to bring Mike in. Or can you bring himself in? I, I did, yeah. I had the chance to interview Commissioner Safer last summer uh, when he mm-hmm. came on my show. As you said, yeah, he was the fire commissioner from 1994 to 1996, NYPD commissioner from 1996 until 2000. Crime fell to historic lows under him. And what I remember most about him is just he a very sweet, and candid and conversational man. He was very forthright about his entire career. And I just remember him as an absolute gentleman. And unfortunately he passed away from health complications. It was sudden, uh, but he led a wonderful life of service, was in the DEA in the sixties and seventies as an undercover, led the US Marshals, a great life of service, 81 wonderful years. He'll be missed. Nice, Rest Mikey. in peace. Thanks Mikey. All right, Lou B. I left a lot. Good stories. Thanks for One coming on the Black could- Cloud. I just like to say it was an honor, honor that you guys asked me to be on, and the the other thing it was a uh, it was uh, to all the people that I were ever worked with, it was my honor to work with you guys. Everybody, everybody taught me stuff. I hope I left some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no doubt about it. You did. I just you did, like, a, you did a great job with a bunch of young guys who were eager and looking to be trained. Man, I had nothing to do. They were so eager. Yeah. So it was easy. Uh, still had but again, it was, to all the guys I ever worked with, it was just an honor to work with you guys. Appreciate that. Good Appreciate stuff, Ruby. That. Yep. All right. So uh, I think that's it, Ruff. We will see you uh, Thursday night, Lou B. Gans. Hey, Thursday night. Come in. Everybody in the chat, Sammy Peters, all the guys, Procacini, Mrs. Procaccini's husband, and uh, Pee Wee, Jose Martinez, my boy, and Agnes. Lots of love. So we see you Thursday. Stay low and go. All right, everybody. We'll see you at the big one. Take care, everybody.
All right, guys. Have a good night, everyone.